You're watching ESPN on ABC. It's a classic matchup between legendary college football programs. Their names alone, Nebraska and Oklahoma, evoke memories of the best the sport has to offer. They dominated the old Big 12 year after year, now stand at the top of the conference with a championship on the line tonight. It's the 19th ranked Cornhuskers of Nebraska against the number eight Oklahoma Sooners in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. There was a time when this was it, the rivalry, the best players, the best coaches, great finishes, and great moments. To the 10, he's all the way home! But back then came to an end, and oh, how we missed that Sooner Husker magic. Welcome to the new good old days, starting tonight with Oklahoma, Nebraska, like it used to be on center stage. A title on the line and both programs on the way up. Now I found There's a new style working in Lincoln with Bill Callahan calling the shots and Zach Taylor cutting loose through the air. The obstacles in Oklahoma seem too high. One loss controversial, the other loss devastating. But instead of packing it in with Adrian Peterson out, they banded together. And now they're back in the championship game. This is how it should be. The long lost rivalry lives again. Oklahoma, Nebraska for the Big 12 title. It's a record crowd at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. We expect 80,000 here tonight, some 60,000 Nebraska fans. They started selling standing room only tickets earlier in the week. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick along with Todd Blackledge. It's great to have you with us. Holly Rowe will join us shortly. What a year it's been for Oklahoma. First, the starting quarterback gets kicked off the team. That blown call that cost him the Oregon game. And then Adrian Peterson, arguably the best player in the entire country, gets hurt. That's a lot to overcome. It is a lot to overcome. And I think what Oklahoma has done really speaks of what a great coaching job Bob Stoops has done this year. Right. I don't know anybody in America has done a better job of he and his staff keeping this team together. They've won seven straight down the stretch, playing their best football. And along the way, they've had a couple guys really step up in a big way for this football team. The first one is their quarterback, Paul Thompson, a fifth-year senior guy who has really answered the call. He was asked to move back from wide receiver to quarterback, and he's took a little thought about it for a couple of days talked to his dad and said went in and told coach shoots I'm your man and he's been the man he's completed over 60 percent of his passes he's been a mature calming influence on this team a great leader he has really been a big addition Alan Patrick is the other guy who has stepped up he was recruited as a defensive back when Adrian Peterson went out he became the feature back Four games over 100 yards. He's an explosive runner, not as big as Peterson, but he's allowed the Sooners to maintain the 14th best running offense in the country. When Bill Callahan took over at Nebraska three years ago, he had to change the entire culture of the program. The short <laughs> passing game offense that he installed well, they'd never done anything like yeah, that before. Radical transformation going from I option to West Coast offense. They struggled early. He had to play with guys that were recruited for a different system. And the first thing he had to do, priority number one, find a quarterback. So he sent his coaches all over looking at junior colleges, and they found a kid named Zach Taylor who was born and raised in Norman, Oklahoma. They found him at Butler County Community College in Kansas. And this year, Zach Taylor in his second year as the starter in this offense, the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year, Bill Cal Callahan says we could not have done what we've done here without Zach Taylor. Well, all the big storms that we had earlier in the week are out of here. The only thing left is the cold, 28 degrees. It will get colder throughout the night. The wind, not that much of a factor. Let's check on the field conditions. Holly Rose down there right now. Holly? Well, Mike, this city was rocked with snow this week. As you said, schools were closed, and actually yesterday they were truckloads of snow that they were hauling out of the stadium. But luckily the field has been covered through all of that. It is compact. It is hard. Tonight. All right, Holly, and there are the Husks.
Huskers of Nebraska. The historic Nebraska-Oklahoma rivalry is back on center stage. Which team will emerge invincible? I think our first congratulations should go out to Wake Forest mm -hmm. and Jim Grobe for winning the ACC this afternoon. A magnificent season that they have had. Nebraska 19th in the polls. Oklahoma number eight. They met every year until the unbalanced schedule for the Big 12. Played every year from 27 to 97. This is the 83rd meeting, and Nebraska has won 10 of the last 14. Bill Callahan, ex of the NFL Raiders, and certainly a sea change in Nebraska with what he came in with, and it's starting to pay dividends for this ball club. He's 22 and 13. Only three years ago, took a team to the Super Bowl, four years ago, actually, with the Raiders. And Oklahoma, just a brilliant coaching job by that gentleman who is 85 and 15. How's that for your first 103? Yeah, not bad. And, and he's been great in big games. He's 24 and 9 against ranked opponents, 13 and 3 against top 10 opponents. So the bigger the game, the better job Bob Stoops does. Kenny Wilson and Brandon Jackson are deep to receive the kickoff of Garrett Hartley. And we'll see the Nebraska offense first. Last year when these teams played in Lincoln, Oklahoma's defense sacked Zach Taylor nine times in their seven-point victory. So pass protection we'll see right away from Nebraska. And we are underway in Kansas City. Wilson from the goal line. Reverse to Jackson. Covered perfectly by Oklahoma. Lewis Baker to make the tackle on special teams. And here is our IBM star watch. Well, Nebraska has the ball. Brandon Jackson became the feature running back in the Iowa State game. They'll play four tailbacks, but he's the main guy right now. And Maurice Purify, he's the go-to receiver, a big wide receiver on the outside, six foot four, 210 pounds. Very difficult guy to match up with. Zach Taylor out of Norman, Oklahoma, with Oklahoma bloodlines. His dad was a captain in the 70s. Oklahoma didn't want him. Nebraska didn't want him. He went to Wake Forest, ended up at Butler Community College, and then ended up at Nebraska. And he has been a godsend for this passing offense. And he checked to us quick pass on the first play. Oklahoma crowded the line with nine defenders, and he went to a quick pass. Got it out to Purify. Wow. Purify lost the ball. Yes, he did. Reggie Smith picked it up for Oklahoma. No sign from the officials. They've got it spotted out of bounds at the two-yard line. Well, the official got wiped out on the sideline by Purify, who was right there at the ball. There's a quick throw, an audible to the quick throw to Purify. He makes the catch, and he drops the ball. Right there, Reggie Smith is able to come in and, and pick up the football. Marcus Walker gets it away from him. He is right at the edge of the sideline, and I think they'll take another look at this one. Well, they'll look and see if his foot was on the line before the ball came out. Boy. No doubt about the recovery mm -hmm. by Reggie Smith, but was he out of bounds before he lost the football? What a huge way to start this game. You know, and, and watching these guys in warm-ups, it didn't appear that the cold was affecting the quarterbacks or the wide receivers. But first play of the game, Purify just not able to tuck the ball away. Just, just had trouble bringing it into his body. Made the catch cleanly. Is a foot out of bounds before the ball comes out. Right foot's in. Nope, his that foot never went loose. out of bounds. That's a fumble. Randy Crystal. The referee talking to the replay official, Terry Turlington out of Dexter, Missouri, upstairs. 
Look at this. This is great position, too. Right there on it. After review, the play is confirmed. First down, Oklahoma. And the Sooners get an enormous break on the first play. And they'll start at the two-yard line. Talk about field position. And Purify coughs it up after the complete pass. Right there, you see wide receiver Ted Gilmore. Wide receiver coach right in Purify's face. Say, hey, you got to shake that off. We need you in this ball game. You got to get that one out of your mind and come back ready to play the next possession. Alan Patrick is the deep man. Zaslaw, the fullback, behind Thompson for the Sooners. Patrick. Touchdown. One play to take advantage of the turnover. And Alan Patrick gets his fourth rushing touchdown in relief of the injured Adrian Peterson. And Purify just beside himself on the sideline. Fumbles have been a problem for Oklahoma, much more so than Nebraska, leading the nation with fumbles lost coming into the ball game, but it was a fumble by Nebraska that sets the early table for Oklahoma. Garrett Hartley was made 42 of 43 point afters this year. Delivers. And with only 48 seconds gone in the ball game, Oklahoma recovers a fumble and gets a touchdown to lead it 7 0. Oklahoma writes a new page in the record book with the fastest score in Big 12 championship history, only 48 seconds. Coach is always talking about getting off to a fast start. <laughs> is that fast enough for you? Well, Purifies the one who wants to get that one out of his mind now and get back in. And you know, on a cold night, the football is slicker. I mean, it, it's harder and it's it's a little more slippery than in a drier, warmer condition. And you have to make that adjustment. Purify just not able to tuck that ball after the catch. Wilson and Jackson deep to receive again. This has not been the strength of this team. Kickoff returns. But this one's pretty good up to the 30. Take a look at the Dr. Pepper lineups for the Nebraska offense. Nebraska was just hoping to be healthy up front for this game. Christensen and Nix are starting because of injuries. That's Lawson, the starter at right tackle. Greg Austin, the starter at left guard most of the time. Battling injuries. Hopefully we'll see them tonight, but not starting, as you might just mention. This is a short passing game offense, but they have really improved. Look at all the guys this year. at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> Daring oh. Nebraska to pass. Instead, they go straight up the middle with Brandon Jackson, who has taken over as the dominant running back of the four guys who have shared the eye back position. Rufus Alexander with the tackle. Well, this has been the biggest change in the Nebraska offense. There was an unblocked guy that couldn't make the tackle. Demarcus Granger, number 96, was in position, just got sidestepped. But Nebraska's improvement in running the football, they went from under 100 last year to almost 200 this year, has made a huge difference in their offensive efficiency. And they love to shift, yeah. trying to get this. defenses out of position. It looks like there are 22 guys within two yards of the ball. Jackson wow. turns the corner, and he's off to the races. Cuts back all the way down to the 20-yard line. When a 39 yard rock Todd, when you commit so many guys to the line of scrimmage, you have no second line of defense. So if you can seal the corner and get your running back to the edge, you've got big plays. Look, there's nobody back here defensively. So if you get to the corner, which he's able to do, there's a lot of green grass ahead. Again, Nebraska comes out with two, three tight ends all the time. They shift, they move, they change strength. They try to get confusion on the defense. And then they snap it before everybody's set, and they're able to pop Jackson out to the edge for a big run. And they're going to mark it at the 29-yard line. So it cost him nine yards on the step out of bounds. 
Jackson again, and this time hit at the line of scrimmage and goes down. Curtis Lofton, the strong side linebacker, was there first. Oklahoma's linebackers are very good, led by the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year. That's Rufus Alexander. He's number 42. He has 95 tackles this year. And the youngster in there, Curtis Lofton, has a chance to be a great linebacker. They're very excited about his athleticism. He's getting better and better each time out. Got a great hometown, Kingfisher, Oklahoma. <laughs> Zach Taylor back to throw, now being pressured, and throws it out of bounds. The pressure was coming from the corner, Marcus Walker. Oklahoma will bring a lot of different pressures. They, they, they like to bring corners. They like to bring safeties. They're not necessarily an all-out blitz, zero coverage team, but they will bring people at you. You see their defense. After the first three games, those numbers didn't look too good. But no, they did. in the last nine games, they have really tightened up the ship defensively. France Hardy is in as an extra wide receiver. He's number seven out of Miami, Florida. Three wide receivers to the near side. And purified at the top of the screen. Three men rush, though, whistle will play dead. False start. Offense, number 61. It's a five yard penalty, third down. Mike Huff, the right guard, third down. And long is not a good down against this Oklahoma defense because, again, this is where they really try to, to bring different looks at you, different blitzes. They'll mix and match a four-man defensive front, sometimes a three-man defensive front. Keep an eye on number five also, the nickelback, Nick Harris. He's a guy they like to bring in a lot of pressure-type defenses. Oklahoma ranks 14th in total defense in the NCAA. Here comes pressure. Taylor steps up. Looked like that ball slipped out of his hand intended for purify. It's incomplete. Darian Williams, the free safety was over there, but he didn't have a shot at it either. Yeah, third down and 14. Oklahoma knows you're pretty much going to throw the football. Those defensive ends in their ears back and come after the quarterback, and they force Zach to throw that one a little bit off. Titchener will come on to punt instead of trying the long field goal from Congdon, who only has a 40-yarder is the longest one he has kicked all year long. A little tougher to kick him in the cold as well. Reggie Smith is deep. And this will pin him down around the 11-yard line, a 23-yard kick. Lincoln and Norman. Not bad drives to Arrowhead in Kansas City. It's a pretty good neutral site. Three hours from Lincoln, five hours from Norman. Nebraska took the bus to get here. Oklahoma flew. And people in Oklahoma hit harder by the big storm this week. It was a little tougher for them to get here. South and east of Kansas City really got hammered up to a foot and a half of snow, ice, drifts. North and west, not too bad. Completed pass to Kelly, who was the go-to guy. That is his 53rd catch of the year. Our IBM Star Watch players for Oklahoma, Alan Patrick, we saw the short touchdown run. He's missed a couple games with an ankle, but when he's healthy, outstanding running the football, Malcolm Kelly. As Mike just said, his 53rd catch, the leading receiver, another one of those big time receivers, six foot four, 270 pound sophomore. Very difficult guy to match up with because of his size, size and skills. Thompson out of Leander, Texas, close to Austin. Got a lot of guys growing up close to one school playing at another. Andre Jones made the tackle on Patrick as he tried to turn the corner. The Dr. Pepper offensive lineup for the Sooners. The offensive line has been outstanding, blocking for the run. The three inside players, all sophomores, are very, very talented. And that right tackle, Trent Williams, a true freshman who is, was in the rotation all season, has been started the last five games because their best offensive lineman, Brandon Braxton, had a broken leg in the Colorado game. So a young, very talented offensive line. 
Patrick is the tailback. He's the Juco player. There's really been such a lift for him. This is the complete pass. Kelly is dragged out of bounds by Courtney Grigsby, the corner. A couple of good completions early for Paul Thompson. Short throws, one on a rollout left. This one on a quick step, three-step drop, throwing to the same guy. Malcolm Kelly on the short route. Again, you see the cushion that Grixby's giving him out there because of the, the difficulty in matching up. Grixby, 5'9", 170, going against 6'4", 215. That would seem to be a favorable matchup. Yeah. By an inch. Oklahoma with the early lead on the turnover. I really think that Paul Thompson is going to have to play well tonight for Oklahoma throwing the football. I think the the strength of this Nebraska defense is their front four and their front seven, particularly that defensive front four. I think they'll be very stout to run the football against. The last two weeks, Oklahoma has just pounded against their opponents. They've only thrown it 12 times against Baylor, 11 times against Oklahoma State. I think they'll have to throw it a little more tonight against this Husker D. Three wide receivers set here, and Patrick, illustrating your point, is drilled by Barry Cryer. Let's go to the studio and check in with Matt Weiner. Matt. It's the Sports Center 30 and 30 with national title implications in Pasadena. UCLA interception ended USC's last drive. Seven game win streak against the Bruins and the national title hopes. In the SEC championship game moments ago, Antoine Robinson picked off that Chris League shovel pass. 21 unanswered points now for Arkansas, which leads the Gators 21-17. Well, this is really opening things up, isn't it? They've got to be happy in Michigan tonight. Chris Brown comes in number 29 as a wide receiver. He'll block on this passing formation. The completion of Emmanuel Johnson. He is the fastest of their wide receivers. And Shanley made the tackle for the Nebraska defense. And speaking of their defense, the line has been dominant this year, especially the ends. Carriker and Moore are very good pass rushers and defensive ends that we haven't seen two this big all year long. I mean, these guys are massive. Yeah, it seems like what's in vogue with a lot of college defenses these days are those fast edge rusher type guys. These are big, big physical guys. Carriker 6'6", 295, Moore 6'4", 280 on the other side. Very strong against the run and quick enough to rush the passer as well. Three tight ends on first and ten. We've seen multiple formations. Roll to the left, throw to the left, incomplete by Thompson. Oklahoma coaches calling for some interference. There was some contact as the ball was coming over there. And you can see Oklahoma's strategy, some quick throws for Paul Thompson. Get him out of the pocket. He likes rolling to his left. He's more accurate throwing, rolling to his left than to the right. Some contact between Grixby and Kelly. You can see the mismatch right there size-wise. I mean, that, that's going to be a, he's, Grixby's got to play physical with him, and he's sure got to keep his hands on him. Well, if he keeps it up, he'll be called for it, because yeah. he got him about three times on that, got away with all of them. You can make contact, but once the ball is in the air, you need to leave that guy alone. And Grixby got an extra shot or two. Play clock's already down to 12. Paul Thompson's got to get him out of the huddle and get ready to snap the football here. Strength of the formation to this side. And Brown will go back to the boundary and get nothing. Out. So again, I think this Nebraska front four is really probably the best group Oklahoma has faced in a few weeks. And Oklahoma has been content to just really pound the running game at people. They've run for over 230 yards five of the last six games. And they haven't had to throw the football. But I think tonight it will be a little bit more on Paul Thompson to throw. And I think if they are successful throwing the football, that will open up things in the running game. Thompson has some pretty good numbers. 18 touchdowns, only seven interceptions. He's thrown for more than 2,000 yards, but he is not your classic drop back quarterback. No, he's not. And, and that's not Oklahoma's strength, is that third down and long drop back and throw the football. And that time, the pressure by DeGundaro got right up into the face of Paul Thompson and forced a high throw. You've got two kickers 
Michael Cohen hang, handles the normal kicks. Mike Nall will come in to handle the pooch punts. Cohen averaging over 42 yards a kick. And Nate Swift, number 87, drops back to his 25 yard line. Nice kick. Swift, fair catch at the 21 yard line. In the 1970s, Sherwood Taylor was a captain for the Sooners. So how did his son Zach end up at Nebraska? We'll tell you that story when we come back to Kansas City. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, 80,000 to see the Big 12 championship game between Nebraska and Oklahoma. 7-0 OU after a recovered fumble and a two-yard touchdown run. Oklahoma trying to shift to match up to what Nebraska just did. Underneath, complete for a short game. Zach Taylor, how did he get to Lincoln, Nebraska? It was a tortured route. Came out of Norman High School in Oklahoma, then redshirted at Wake Forest, was a backup for one year with the Deacons, transferred to Butler Community College in Kansas, then came to Nebraska, and everybody says, how could he not be at Oklahoma? Well, he admitted it. He said, I wouldn't have recruited me out of high school either. Well, even out of Butler, the, uh, the best offer he had before Nebraska came calling was Marshall. That was the best scholarship offer he had, but Bill Callahan had needed a quarterback. Nothing there for Jackson. And Curtis Lofton made the tackle. There's his dad, who was a captain for Oklahoma, wore number 31 as a defensive back. His son wears number 13 because you can't wear 31 as a quarterback. Right. So that's as close as he could get. And there's dad, parallel to the ground, making a tackle. That's a good picture to have, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That was before they had the helmet-to-helmet uh, -helmet rule. Because <laughs> <You know, laughs> right. he looked like he was going right for the head. There was a lot of that. Third and two. Jackson runs into his own man and then lunges forward. Some contact after the play is loose again. Came loose. Oklahoma says they have it. Brent Venables was out into that huddle. The defensive coordinator for Oklahoma was out in the middle of the player and officials. Here he is right here arguing the call. He is outraged <laughs> that they didn't get the football. Well, the I play was going into the pile. Watch the penetration. Just tremendous penetration by the safeties coming up into the pile. Darian Williams, number 41, hit that and drove the lineman back, and that forced Jackson to stop and then try to find a hole. Now, does this ball come out? It's popped out before yes, he is does. down. That was Demarcus Granger who knocked the ball loose. They get the snap off. They're not going to take a look at it. They can't take a look at it because they called him down, so it's not a reviewable ball. They said he was down by we contact. Saw the, it's over. Right. We saw the look that showed that it was a fumble, but it was ruled down, and so it's not a reviewable play. But clearly, this ball is knocked out by Granger, number 96, before Jackson's foot or any part of his body hits the ground. Now, the officials are taught differently than they used to be. They are taught to let these plays go as much as possible so they can be reviewed. I did not hear a whistle, but obviously that was the call on the field. Nebraska really dodged one there because Didn't it was they? the turnover that set up Oklahoma's touchdown, and they would have gotten great field position on that turnover. Patrick is the tailback behind Paul Thompson, and Thompson sets to throw. Perfect strike, Kelly. Touchdown, 66 yards. He beat Courtney Gretzby. Well, they've gone short against Grixby. They've gone quick out, quick slam, little short things. And now they go stop and go. A double move by Malcolm Kelly. Grixby bit on it. And a beautiful throw by Thompson. 
Nice job by Kevin Wilson, the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, moving the pocket, getting Paul Thompson out away from the pressure so he could see clearly down the field to make that throw. Thompson laid it out perfectly for Kelly. And it's a 66-yard strike. Paul Thompson, the quarterback who had been moved to wide receiver, comes back to play quarterback after Red Bull. Adrian Peterson with a big smile on his face, although all he can be right now is a cheerleader as his Sooners have jumped on top 14 to nothing. A turnover and a big touchdown pass, the two biggest plays of this game. And Nebraska has to be stunned yeah. right now. Both scoring drives, didn't take long, one play, boom, boom. A fumble and a two-yard touchdown run and a 66-yard bomb. Partly to kick it off. But a great kickoff man this year. About half of his kicks have been touchbacks. Wilson and Jackson are deep. And this will go over Jackson's head. Out of bounds, they'll start from the 20. Let's go back to the touchdown, Todd. Well, here's Malcolm Kelly up here, and he's going to work one-on-one -on -one. now. He's been doing this, and he's been doing this. This time, he's going to go, hesitate, and then take off deep, and you're going to see Grixby just bite. As soon as Kelly stops, Grixby's going to stop with him, and that little hesitation was all Kelly needed to get separation, and then Paul Thompson put the ball out there for him. But that was set up by the short throws in the first couple possessions that Oklahoma had the football. Tough way to start a game for Nebraska. Well, this is where you need your leader, Zach Taylor, to just kind of keep things together. They still got a lot of time in the football game. They've been stunned by a couple big plays and a big turnover. And he has virtually all of the passing records in Nebraska history. They try to run with Jackson. Jackson gets a couple. Let's check in with Matt. It's been a Taco Bell update from Atlanta where the SEC championship is playing out since halftime when Florida learned the USC result. They've generated no offense, but they've just gained some momentum. Hunting, Reggie Fish can't handle it for the Hogs. Wandy Pierre Lewis pops on it for the Gators who take a 24-21 lead. Rutgers scored in their opening drive trying to win the Big East. They lead it 10-3 at West Virginia. All right, Matt, thanks very much. It's second and nine here. Nebraska trying to get untracked offensively. Four-man rush and pressure. Pass complete, purify, fighting for extra yardage. He's trying to make up well, the mistake he made earlier. And you see the Oklahoma defenders trying to rip that ball out after he fumbled that first time, and he just kept running for more yardage. <laughs> Little pressure coming from the outside. You're going to see the safety coming off the edge. It's pretty well picked up by Nebraska. And Zach Taylor knows he's got to throw under duress. And now watch the defenders try to get the football instead of just tackle Purify. But he doesn't go down, and he protects the football. Zach Latimer, the middle linebacker, was tied up with him. And Purify got five, six, seven extra yards out of that play. Taylor under pressure, and down he goes. Number 99, C.J.I.U. with the sack. Well, again, Carl Nix is the right tackle in there tonight. Matt Slauson is the original starter, and he's working against a tough guy right now. This is a tough matchup for Nix. I.U. is a speed rusher, gets him going upfield, and then cuts back on, on side and gets his fourth sack of the season. The defensive ends have really picked up the pace for Oklahoma the last four or five games. He's out of Highland, Utah. That's his fourth sack. Pressure coming on Taylor again. A little flare. And Jackson picks up about five. Darian Williams with a tackle. Let's check in with Holly. 
Well, guys, after the game at Oregon where Oklahoma's defense gave up 509 yards total offense, Bob Stoops decided to do things differently. He decided that instead of worrying about schemes and recognition when they were preparing with the scout team, they just needed to go good on good. First team against first team. He thought it was more important to get a speed look so that they could hone down their fundamentals. Since that time, they put it together. They're the 14th defense in the country in total defense. And he thinks it's because they're gone good on good and improved their fundamentals. And Holly, that's a huge improvement to go from 97th in the country at a 119 down to number 14. Pressure coming from behind on Taylor. Nearly picked Marcus Walker. If he holds that ball, he's got a touchdown. Well, this ball's in the air a long time. Zach Taylor's got a pretty strong arm, but this one floated on him a little bit, throwing from the left hash to the right sideline. That ball stayed in the air a long time, and that could have been another touchdown for Oklahoma off a big play. I just want to build a little bit more on what Holly's saying. All teams do a little bit of good versus good in practice. A lot of teams do two-minute drill, but this team has done a lot more than most teams. They do inside running drill, one-on-one -on -one pass blocking stuff plus team blitz. They do a lot more than most teams, and it's really helped them fundamentally on defense. Titchener to kick. Smith signals fair catch and makes it inside the 15 yard line for 39 yards. Sunday night, hope you join Reese Davis, Mark Bay, and Lou Holtz for a complete breakdown of each and every college football bowl game. The 2006 Bowl Selection Show on ESPN at 10 Eastern is also available in high definition on ESPN HD. Call your cable operator or satellite provider today. The thing that to me is so exciting about this season is, is just, you know, here we are, the last weekend. It'll all be decided tomorrow, but the very last weekend, Things are still getting shook up, you know, and still kind of unraveling for a team like USC today. Alan Patrick on the toss. Takes it up to the 18-yard line, picks up about four. Andrew Shanley, the free safety, horse collared him and took him down there. And Paul Thompson is off to an outstanding start today in this ball game and, and really has not been called on to do too much the last couple of weeks. Again, 11 passes against Oklahoma State last week, 12 the week before against Baylor. But I'm just impressed with what this guy has done. He's a very mature guy. He's a very calming presence on this football team. When Bob Stoops approached him about going back to quarterback, he said, I need to think about it. I need to talk to my dad about it. And he finally realized, you know what? I think that's the best move for me and for our team. Quick out to the big guy, Kelly. He's driven down. More on that. Here's how. Well, guys, the first thing uh, Paul Thompson did was call his dad, Mark, and say, what do you think? And Mark said, you know, all through the summer, I had kept it in his mind that this would be a possibility. I kept telling him, you need to throw at something. Keep that arm going. So his dad had kind of tried to let him know all along that it would be a possibility, so it didn't come as such a huge shot, guys. Well, you know, Holly, his first reaction was very human. It was almost like, you know, why don't you leave me alone? You moved me to, to a wide receiver. This might be my future in the NFL. And then his better instincts took over after Bomar was dismissed from the team for taking checks for work he didn't do. And again, Kelly on the slant, and Kelly with five catches already in this game. And make no mistake, Paul Thompson was recruited as a quarterback and has quarterback skills. And you look at the comparison, Rhett Bomar's numbers last year as the starter, and Paul Thompson this year. Thompson's your better. Yeah, absolutely, in every category better. Record better, touchdown to interception, which is one of the most significant things, percentage of completions. And he has done an outstanding job under difficult circumstances. He took it took it by the, the throat and has really played well all through the season. Jacob Gutierrez is in for the first time. He gets a ball and a draw and goes absolutely nowhere. Corey McEwen makes the tackle. And that will be the end of the first quarter. 14-0. This presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship game will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Sellout crowd of 80,000 plus here at Arrowhead in Kansas City. Big 12 championship game and here are the Dr. Pepper stats thus far the best 
indication of the game is 14 nothing. Even though Oklahoma only has four yards, they have 105 yards passing, including a 66-yard touchdown. Spot. But they got their big play guy involved, Malcolm Kelly, in that first quarter. Five catches for 93 yards last week in their win in Stillwater. Only one catch for 12 yards the whole day. He was kind of a non-factor in that win. He's been a huge factor so far tonight. Chris Brown, who has played well the last two or three weeks as a running back, is in there, number 29. Still the short pass complete to Manuel Johnson. Picks up maybe a yard as he lost his footing on the throw from Paul Thompson. A little different attack in this first quarter in the first half for Oklahoma than what they've shown the last couple weeks. More throwing early, trying to loosen up this uh, physical Nebraska defense. Third and nine here as we are only a few seconds into the second quarter of play. Thompson again, it's the screen and incomplete intended for Chris Brown, and he couldn't handle it. Pretty well defended also by Nebraska. I don't think even if he catches that ball, they get anywhere near the first down. Pretty good pass rush that time by the leader on that Nebraska defense, Adam Carricker, number 90. We haven't called his name yet tonight, but that was a pretty good push and a force on that throw. Cohen to kick it away, and Grigsby is back at his 20. Pressure coming, but he got it out of there. Oh, my goodness. And a flag. As the putter went down, they just Jackson will check this. He just ran right over him. I mean, Clayton Seavers just flat ran right over the putter. I mean, he's got to get out of the way. It's fourth and nine. Is it the five or 15 yard variety? If it's five, it would still be fourth and four. Running into the kicker, number 88. It's a five-yard penalty, fourth down. Well, Seavers is pretty lucky here because uh, he's got to get out of the way. Seavers is going to be right here. You're going to see him come through on the rush right up the middle, and then he loses his balance, and, and he just doesn't get out of the way of the kicker, just runs into him. Very fortunate it was just a five-yard penalty. The defense gets a stop on third down. You don't want to give the ball back to Oklahoma right now. And now they put Nate Swift back as the return man. Low wobbly kick. Makes a good bounce for the Sooners and will go down to the 21 yard line. Coming up, Holly Rowe will have the legendary Tom Osborne, the Nebraska great on the sideline. Welcome back to Kansas City, Nebraska, and Oklahoma for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Glad you could join us tonight. Nebraska has won 10 of the last 14, but Oklahoma the last two, and the Sooners have a lead here. The winner goes to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. They get the automatic bid. Very important drive, I think, for Zach Taylor and the Nebraska offense. This is their fifth offensive possession. They've only crossed the 50-yard line one time. Got to possess the football a little bit, get their confidence back as a unit. Taylor straight back to throw, short drop, and throws a completion out to the 30. Let's go to Holly Rowe with Tom Osborne. Well, guys, it wouldn't be Nebraska football if we didn't have Coach Osborne here. Coach, when you hear Oklahoma Nebraska football games, what brings you, what memories does that bring to mind? Well, usually real big games and cold weather, and we got them both tonight. What was one of your fond memories from this classic rivalry? Well, I think the first time we beat Oklahoma when I was a coach was 1978. But uh, we had some good memories. We had some bad ones, too. But uh, great rivalry. Uh, always enjoyed co uh, the contest with Barry Switzer. Great athletes. And uh, it should be a good game tonight. Uh, Oklahoma Very jumped out early, but... Uh, sometimes when that happens, it can uh, backfire on you a little bit, too. When you're down in a big game like this, 14-0, what do you have to do as a coach to get your team back into it? 
But I just keep playing. The main thing is not to panic. And uh, Nebraska's had a couple bad breaks, but they'll they'll get some breaks. And so I think it'll still end up being a good game. All right, thanks very much. Uh, Coach is now becoming a teacher next semester, and he's teaching a leadership class at Nebraska. I can only imagine his leadership class is going to be jam-packed, guys. Uh, you're right, Holly. They ought to be lined up around the uh, campus and back for that one. What a, what a nice man. What a great, great job. He did at Nebraska. And he's right, too, about not panicking. And, and you know, to me, that's the, the picture of Tom Osborne is this stoic on yeah. the sideline and just everything's always under control, very Tom Landry like. And Bill Callahan knows right now, hey, we've given up a couple plays, we've had a couple bad things happen. We're down two touchdowns, but you know, our offense this season has been outstanding. And we're the ninth best offense in the country, averaging over 430 yards a game. We've just got to stick to what we're doing and make some plays and see if we can get some points on the board. Last seven carries have yielded only two yards. Taylor right down the middle and completes this one. Perfect strike to Peterson. And a gain of 24 yards. This is a nice job by Zach Taylor buying a little extra time, too, because he was in the pocket. He knows Oklahoma can rush the passer. He needs to move a little bit. And then he makes the nice throw on the move to Peterson. And Peterson did a great job of holding on to the football, even though he was going to get belted by the safety coming over after the catch. Tucks it away, takes the hit, first down Nebraska. Boy, that was a lot of open territory in the middle of that field. Oklahoma, a lot of cover two look. I mean, that's kind of their base defensive look. They open up the middle if you can get guys in there. Taylor, short set. And has this one bounce right off the look like the face mask of Terrence Nunn. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Mike, let's get you for Rising Wireless update from Atlanta in the SEC Championship. Florida playing for one title, effectively campaigning for a spot in the BCS Championship game. That's Percy Harvin, the man in motion. He'll stay in motion till he finds the end zone. 67 yards for the freshman, his second touchdown of the day. And the Gators now up by 10. Good. Boy, Matt, they have used Percy, uh, Percy Harvin so effectively in that role. One of the more explosive young players in college football. Taylor, good protection again, and now it breaks down. And the tackle made by the defensive end, Calvin Thibodeau, out of Houston, Texas. And that was a coverage set. Yeah, it was. Because the initial protection was pretty good here for Zach Taylor, and he... Tries to step up in the pocket, but uh, you're not going to be able to hold the ball that long against this Oklahoma defense. They can really get it cranked up. And now you put yourself in a very difficult situation, third down and 10 plus, after a pretty good drive gets you into the Oklahoma territory. Nebraska has not converted a third down tonight, 0 for 3 against this Oklahoma defense. And Taylor, Taylor has to use a timeout. Trying to get his people lined up and make sure they can pick up the blitz. He thought it was coming and had to burn the timeout with 10.52 to go first half. Finally, they're saying some good ice skating weather in Kansas City, and certainly it is. In the 20s tonight, Adrian Peterson, the brilliant running back who may be able to play if they go to a bowl game, and certainly they will. Well, I saw him on the field during warm-ups, and he wanted to play tonight. I mean, he was bouncing around, disappointed that he wasn't in uniform tonight. He's very, very close physically to being recovered from that broken collarbone, but they certainly don't want to take a chance on him. This is where Oklahoma really puts you in a tough spot. Third down and 10 plus. In these situations tonight, Nebraska is 0 for 3. Ball start, offense, number 62. It's a five yard penalty, third down. Tandy Christensen, who's in there for the injured Greg Austin. They move around, they show you different things. I think Oklahoma disguises defensive coverage is about as well as anybody in college football. And particularly on third down, that's when they're most creative. There's Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator. For a while was a co-defensive coordinator with Bob Stoops' brother, Mike Stoops, who's now the, the head coach at Arizona. Bob 
Bob Stoops, of course, a defensive guy, uh, kind of all on that same page of pressure, disguise, and get after the quarterback. Third and 17, they come with four. Taylor flushed and throws incomplete. There was a collision downfield. Burdine was putting on the pressure as one of his receivers went down in the collision with the defensive back. Well, it's not so much that they're bringing too many guys to block. It's just the Oklahoma guys know that it's passed. They're not playing run responsibilities at all. They're coming after the passer. And this defensive front, not as big as Nebraska's front, but very quick and athletic, and that helps in rushing the passer on third down. Titchener to kick to Smith. He was all the way back to his 15-yard line. Nice high kick. No fair catch and no return. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And it started immediately. Purify on the first play from scrimmage. Caught a pass but lost it. Reggie Smith recovered. Took it to the two. Alan Patrick scored on the first play and only 48 seconds into the game. It was 7-0 and then Malcolm Kelly behind the defense for 66 yards and a touchdown. And that's how we have arrived at 14 to nothing. Patrick back in as the deep man in the eye. Instead they run away from him. And an incomplete pass intended for Kelly. Couldn't hold that one. But they are they are really hurting uh, Nebraska right now with that matchup. They are isolating Kelly on Grixby. And every time they're they're getting one on one matchups out there and, and Malcolm Kelly kind of has the edge in right now not just physically but I think even mentally right now because Grixby not playing with a lot of confidence against him right at this particular moment that time Kelly just dropped the football. But once you've been burned for that 66 yard of your confidence is taking a beating. Yeah. Thompson again. This one is completed to Johnson, and Johnson chased out of bounds. Let's go to Matt Weiner, Matt. Now let's go back to Atlanta. Here we go from the SEC championship game. Arkansas pulling everything out of the playbook. Cedric Washington gets it, and he throws across the field to Felix Jones. They reviewed it. He did stay in bounds, and the lead is now cut to 3, 31-28 early on in the fourth quarter there. Rutgers has held West Virginia to 82 yards rushing so far. They are at the half in Morgantown, and the Scarlet Knights with a chance to win the Big East, lead it by four. Rutgers, Rutgers quite a story. First and 10 after the complete pass to Johnson. Oh, and another one complete to the sideline again to Manuel Johnson from Thompson. Paul Thompson is looking outstanding tonight. I mean, his timing is outstanding. His accuracy is outstanding. Here he's rolling to his left on the move. Keeps it outside away from the defender. That's a beautiful throw and beautiful timing. I mean, you can just, he looks so relaxed out there throwing the football. When a guy is, is not comfortable or confident throwing, he starts to kind of guide it, maybe force the football. He looks very loose, very relaxed throwing it right now, and his numbers bearing that out. 9 of 13, 136 in a touch. Thompson again, play action. Throws again, complete this time, but Kelly makes the sixth grab of the night. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, you're talking about how comfortable Paul Thompson looks. That's by design. Kevin Wilson said because he became the quarterback the day that fall camp started, they didn't have enough time to put in stuff, see how it worked, look at this wrinkle. They just went to Paul, what are you comfortable with? They really have a great communication system and sitting down, figuring out what he's good at, what he likes, what he feels comfortable doing. They also said, He's so mature, he really is able to communicate well with the coaches during the game about what he's seeing, what he likes, and what he's good at. So, guys, that communication and maturity of Paul Thompson has been a big help pairing down the offense. And Holly, he said he just wanted to be seen as someone who fought through the hard times, 
and like to be thought of as a competitor and certainly that's what his teammates and the, the fans of the Oklahoma Sooners have to think of him after a great performance this year. Yeah, I'm just I'm really impressed because when I was down the field before the game watching pregame warmups and I was watching him throw in pregame I didn't think the ball was coming out of his hands really crisp. I mean it looked like the cold was maybe bugging him a little bit and the ball was kind of floating out of his hand but tonight once the game started he's kicked it into a different gear and right now I mean he is just throwing the ball beautifully and he's throwing it particularly well on the move they're moving him out of the pocket which is, is a little bit more of his comfort level than dropping straight back in the pocket and stepping up the throw. And both to the left and the right side, it seems. It doesn't seem to matter which side he goes to. And, and this is ruled really incomplete. That was a short. Sure. Yeah, it was. He bobbled it and couldn't hold it as he went to the ground. It was a big play because that was third and one. They had an easy conversion for the first down if he holds on to the football. And that's going to force a punt for Oklahoma. That was a big drop. Shanley showing his joy after he went to the ground with him and knocked him loose. Cohen to punt again and Swift will drop to the 10. Very short end over end not a good kick but look at the bounce. Holy cow, what a tremendous bounce for Cohen all the way inside the five. A 46-yard kick, maybe half of that in the air. But it works anyway, doesn't it? Welcome back to Kansas City, the Big 12 Championship game brought to you by Dr. Pepper. Now our Aflac trivia question. Which head coach had the higher winning percentage? Tom Osborne or Barry Switzer. We call it a hint, but it's cheating. If you want to cheat, go to page 672 of the ESPN College Football Encyclopedia, and the answer is there. Todd calls it an open book test, and open I say it's cheating. Well, I'll give you a hint. But they're both really good. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the winning percentage is good for both. And Nebraska in a tough spot here, starting inside their own five. You gotta really be careful with the football here. You're down 14 to nothing. Your defense is trying to hold on here. You've got to just move the football, but Zach Taylor needs to be very smart with it here. Todd is the single setback, the fullback. And Taylor wants to throw, retreats to his own end zone. Under pressure, throws it away. Purify was the only guy in the neighborhood, but Zach Latimer, the middle linebacker, was applying the pressure on Zach Taylor. And the first five drives, the first was the worst. One play and a fumble. They punted every drive since. Yeah. Really haven't been able to get close to uh, to that red zone. They're a very effective red zone football team. 46 opportunities, 41 scores, but they haven't gotten close to the uh, to the Oklahoma red zone this so far in the ball game. Now they'll bring Jackson back in as the tailback. Taylor to throw again. Pressure from behind. Over the middle and complete. He got it to Peterson and Peterson. All the way down to the 48 yard line. A gain of 48. And what a throw by Taylor under pressure. Yeah, I thought he was going to get hit for a safety. It was a corner bit blitz. Lendy Holmes was coming on the corner blitz. And right at the last minute, he lets go of the ball and finds Peterson crossing the field for a huge gain out of his own end zone. Here's Peterson coming in motion. And he's going to cross the field. And Taylor's going to pick him up under duress and make a beautiful throw over the shoulder. Saving tackle by Nick Harris. And those crossing patterns, especially deep like that, take time. And he was throwing from his end zone. Huge play from Nebraska. Can they take advantage? Here comes the blitz. Steps up and throws incomplete in between receivers. Got Harry and his tight end short, and Terrence Nunn was deep, and he split the difference. 
Bill Callahan developed a tremendous passing game when he was with the Raiders. Richie Gannon was just brilliant in that West Coast offense. And Callahan believes in it very deeply and teaches it extremely well. Taylor again guns that one over the middle, tipped and incomplete. Boy, Darian Williams, the free safety, was reading Zach Taylor the entire way on that play and almost came up with a big time interception. He cut right in front of the receiver because he was reading the quarterback the entire way. You'll see him in the bottom right of your screen come right in front of the intended receiver. Swift just couldn't come down with the catch. And you see every game why defensive backs are not wide receivers. 13 of the last 15 Nebraska plays have been passes. And they have yet to convert a third down in this game. Taylor pressure coming. Hit as he throws incomplete. Just got it out of there before he was ripped by C.J. I.U. But again, I think that's long enough protection. I think he's got to get rid of the exactly. football here. I mean, Zach Taylor is steps up in the pocket. Those guys are fighting, giving him time. He's just got to throw it right now. You can't hold it that long against the defense this fast. Well, watch the second hit. Nick Harris, the safety, number five coming in. I.U. hits him up high. You got to get rid of that football. Well, the second one was a deep leader. Mm -hmm. If you have a clock in your head as a quarterback, when you play a team this fast, you need to speed that clock up. You got to resynchronize a little bit. Well, after that one, at least the clock is clean. <laughs> Still 14 nothing in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game. Let's revisit our trivia question. Which head coach had the higher winning percentage? Was it Nebraska's Tom Osborne or Oklahoma's Barry Switzer? You've been thinking? Switzer, 83.7. Tom Osborne, 83.6. Tough to lose that one. Yeah. And they both earned it. They had great teams year after year. OU backed up to its own 10. Patrick trying to get outside but picked up a couple. You know, you look at the scoreboard here and you and you think, well, Nebraska's defense must not be playing very well. It's 14 to nothing. I, I think Nebraska's defense is not playing too badly, particularly against the run. They've been very strong against they've given up a couple passes to Paul Thompson, but for Oklahoma really They've got two touchdowns and it came on the two drives where they had the best field position. The first drive, of course, they took over on the Nebraska two and scored in one play. And then the next touchdown, they started on their own 34 and threw the 66-yard touchdown pass on one play. But overall, Nebraska's defense has been pretty solid here in this first half. Well, they've only given up six yards rushing in eight tries and now a timeout for the Sooners. Both teams have Two left with 6.08 to go in the first half clock. Thompson's numbers so far. Well, what they've done with Paul Thompson a lot tonight is they've rolled him out. They've got him out of the pocket. They got him out in his comfort zone. Moving, throwing on the move, and he's been very accurate. He got off to a fast start. I think he hit his first two or three passes. And he's made big time plays. He had the one long throw to Malcolm Kelly for the touchdown, but most of his work has been short throws moving out of the pocket. 19 million viewers made Show Me the Money the biggest new game show of the year. ABC Wednesday, million dollar answers, million dollar dancers, and one priceless host, William Shatner, hosts Show Me the Money, all new Wednesday, 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. If Shatner's in it, I'm watching. <laughs> Second night was 6.08 to go in the first half of play. We're in Kansas City, where we get off to a huge start, especially if you're an Oklahoma fan. First play from scrimmage, Nebraska turned it over. First play from scrimmage for Oklahoma, they got a touchdown. And Paul Thompson has been throwing exclusively 
to his wide receivers. Kelly with six catches. Fumble the snap. Fumble. They got it back. Patrick may have actually gotten a yard out of it. Checking with Matt Weiner. Matt, what do you have? We got a Sports Center 30 at 30 update. UCLA quarterback Patrick Cowan ran for 57 tough yards against the Trojans. His defense stifled the USC offense and knocked them out of national title consideration. At the SEC Championship, Florida hoping to fill that void. The reverse receiver option pass there is a 38-28 lead. Well, that is a tremendous offensive mm. ball. So diverse. Flag is down here. As they whistle the play dead. Ball start. Offense. Number 72. Five yard penalty. Third down. How about that for UCLA? I mean, I don't I think believe. anybody gave them a chance today against them. You know, the only person I think that I heard give them a chance was Chris Fowler today. Really? And I've heard him say it all week. Good call. And uh, he may be the only guy I heard saying that pretty consistently this week. Third and 12. Lining up in man-to-man -man coverage. Nebraska fans are roaring, and Thompson just throws this one wow. up for grabs. A terrible decision, and Shanley fielded it for the interception. Thompson being chased and just tossed it up in the air. And he got pressure, and he thought for sure it was man-to-man -man with no safety help. But Nebraska came out of that coverage and had a safety coming over the top. And it was actually the safety, Shanley, who got the interception. Once Thompson felt the pressure, he just unloaded it, thinking it was one-on-one. -on -one. But here comes Shanley over the top to get the interception. A huge break for the Nebraska defense. You just can't make that throw, and Shanley with his fourth interception of the season and that's exactly what Nebraska needed Taylor he's under pressure he had to throw it away he was, and he made the right decision yeah. he was looking for his tight end number 89 coming out of the backfield Kevin Lures but he got knocked out got tripped up coming out Taylor has only hit one of his last eight throws. Got to give some credit to that Oklahoma defense as well. Coverage by the secondary and the linebackers. I thought Nebraska might try to run on that first down play. They've gotten away from their running game quite a bit. Taylor near side. Nice throw. Nice grab. Terrence Nunn, who was their leading receiver coming into this game with 37 catches this year. And a nice job working the sideline by Nunn because he made that catch stayed in bounds and actually got about four more yards just by tiptoeing on the sideline. The ball's thrown a little high. Nunn gets the feet down and then works down the sideline for about an additional four yards to bring up third and short. And now we've got a timeout, Oklahoma. As the Sooners use one on defense to regroup. Near the conclusion of tonight's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Zach Taylor leads them out. Biggest drive of the night. For Nebraska, they're trying to get back into this ball game. Kenny Wilson is the new tailback. Taylor instead throws for the end zone, and it's Tifa Tiller for the touchdown. Wow. What a throw. Third down and one. Oklahoma's thinking run all the way. And Zach Taylor hangs in, hangs in, and makes a big time throw. Tifa Tiller fell down on the First down play makes up for it in a huge way on the touchdown. And Zach Taylor with his 25th touchdown pass of the year. Another school record. He owns virtually every school record in Nebraska history for throwing the football. 
What a great play on third and one by Zach Taylor. They're going to take one tight end and run him to the flag. He's going to take the coverage. Tifa Tiller is going to be coming to the post, and nobody goes with him. They go with J.B. Phillips. Nobody goes with Tifa Tiller and a touchdown throw under duress by Zach Taylor for a huge touchdown. Watch Taylor hang in there. Knows he's going to get hit. Steps into it and makes the throw. Boy, he's lucky, too, because Kenny Wilson, is tailback, whiffed on a block to try to protect him. Well, the defense got the interception, and the offense capitalized with the best field position and a touchdown. That gets 60 of the 80,000 right. back into it. Remember what Coach Osborne told Holly, too. Sometimes when you jump out to a quick lead, it comes back to haunt you a little bit. You get a little complacent. I go back and think about that third and one drop by Oklahoma. They had another good, good drive, and they could have maybe get in scoring position again. They drop it. And here a few series later, Oklahoma draws with or Nebraska draws within seven. Oklahoma, one of the best return teams in the country, averaging almost 25 yards a return. Johnson and Smith are deep. Great cut to the outside. Smith still on his feet. 40, 45, 47 yard line before he slammed out of bounds a return of 36. You remember 1971, Nebraska, Oklahoma? They called it the game of the century. Thanksgiving Day. Johnny Rogers started the fireworks with one of the great kick returns of all time. 72 yards for a touchdown as number one faced number two. Down late in the fourth quarter, Jeff Kenny with a two-yard run for a touchdown gave Nebraska the lead, a 35-31 win and the Big 8 title. It was the 21st straight win for Nebraska in a great streak. Thompson right down the middle intended for Kelly. Double coverage and some contact, no flag. Andrew Shanley was right there. This ball was a little underthrown by Paul Thompson. It was another, another double move by Malcolm Kelly. Good play action fake on first down. And Kelly got separation from the corner, Grigsby. But the ball was a little underthrown, and that allowed Shanley to get back in and make a play. Or get a push. And Shanley got a play. <laughs> That's right, Shanley got a push. Let's check in with Holly. But Bob Stoops on that play, what he's saying to the referee right in front of me is, hey, he couldn't even go for the football. They were impeding him. I don't know if he's right. No, I think he's right, Ollie. This time they'll go short and complete. The intended for Eldridge, the big tight end. Rude, the linebacker was there. It's a good name yeah. for a linebacker. Oh, yeah. Well, that was a nice play, and again, Oklahoma coming out throwing. I think part of the reason they're throwing first two plays on this drive is because of the great kick return. It got him out in great field position, and they can be aggressive offensively. And their offensive lineman looks like he's a little banged up. Brandon Walker, the right guard, number 73, being attended to right now. And the officials stop the clock with 3.50 to go in the first half. Don't miss an all-new episode of Daybreak starring Ty Diggs, Wednesday's number one new hit and the season's most innovative new thrill ride. Critics give it four stars. They are calling it enormously entertaining and compelling. It's only on ABC Wednesday at 9, 8 Central. And coming up at halftime, we will have the Dr. Pepper Million Dollar Challenge. Billy Lane, who is right there from Oklahoma City. And there's Mike Golick, his coach. Mike, what are you doing, well, Here's what I don't understand is Mike Golick's coaching this guy. Gino Toretto was coaching the guy in the ACC championship game. Doesn't seem fair, does no, it? No, it doesn't. You got to have Mike Greenberg there coaching him. I mean, Greeny's got to know more about throwing the ball in Golick. But anyhow, Billy Lane, if he gets 11 footballs into the giant Dr. Pepper can, he would win a million bucks. 
as they have to help Brandon Walker off, and it's third and ten now. I wouldn't leave Malcolm Kelly singled down here. I'd get a little help with a safety rather than let, and they got a safety coming over the top right now. Brian Simmons is in there on the offensive line. Thompson under pressure. Throws in nearly a circus catch. Made over there by the tight end Joe John Finley. Got his hands on it, couldn't hold it. Excuse me, that was Joaquin Iglesias instead. Nine and not 19. Well, he made an acrobatic catch for a touchdown at Oklahoma State last week. Almost comes down with another one here. But another big stop for the Nebraska defense after the excellent kick return by Reggie Smith. And not much time taken off the clock either. Now Grixby will have a chance to return a punt. Another end over end wobbler. And Grixby buried as he got back to the 25 yard line. This rivalry had just produced so many great ball games. And great coaching was where it started. Tom Osborne won five national championships. Barry Switzer won seven. Seven combined Heisman trophies, including Johnny Rogers, Billy Sims. And you just have to wonder what Billy Sims would have done in the NFL had he not been hurt. Boy, what a talent. Man. Great players, great coaches, great tradition. And the uniforms. I mean, I know. turn They're on classics, the television. You see the uniforms, you go, oh, well, I'm going to settle in for this one. This is the 24th meeting also where both teams are nationally ranked. I mean, this game has just always had that kind of impact. Marcus Walker, the injured player, being tended to. Marcus Walker, one of their starting corners, really has been a key factor in solidifying this Oklahoma defense. When Marcus Walker and Lendy Holmes were inserted as starting corners after the Oregon game, and Reggie Smith was moved from corner back to strong safety. That really uh, strengthened this Oklahoma defense. Well, Matt Weiner has more on what has been a very active day and night. Matt? On ESPN, Rutgers and West Virginia to decide the Big East Championship. Jarrett Brown playing for Pat White tonight. He was banged up and not on the field. Finds Darrell Jello, 48 yards down inside the five. A Steve Slayton run would punch it in on third down, so it's 13-10 there. Meanwhile, Florida making its closing argument for the BCS jury. Urban Meyer has already gotten the what else but Gatorade shower less than a minute to go in a 10-point Gatorade lead. Well, what a great, perfor great performance by them. And Slayton, is he any good? You know, I think some people would say now, well, that USC lost, that maybe Michigan should be the team that would get a chance to play Ohio State again. I, I think Ar Urban Meyer's got a very legitimate argument. I do, too. To go through the SEC with only one loss and to beat a team like Arkansas, they, like they, it looks like they're going to do tonight, very impressive for the Florida team. I think Florida has every bit as right to play Ohio State or to move up and have a chance to play Ohio State as Michigan would at this point. I just love how the season has gone down to the to the very wire. I mean, the, you know, the final weekend of the season and so much still being decided tonight. Well, really, all those schools uh, in the top ten, with the possible exception of Boise State, yeah. really have no complaints. Everybody has had their opportunities. Right. Enough teams have lost so that if you took care of your own business, you would be there. So right. nobody's got a real argument except maybe who is going to play in that last game right. again. And that's, you know, that's... I don't know. I think the debate and the talking about it, I think that's good for college football. I, do I, I don't necessarily think the system is perfect. It's not. I mean, it's got flaws, and as long as you don't have a situation like last year where two undefeated teams that were the, clearly the two best teams matching up, you're always going to have room for controversy and debate. But you're against the playoff. How can you be against <laughs> a playoff? I, I'm against the playoffs because I think the play, a playoff would destroy bowl games, and I think bowl games are great for college football. They are too, but I, I wonder why it would destroy the bowl games. I think the bowl games would still be great. I don't think you could incorporate a playoff into bowl games because of the way bowl games are, where it's a week-long activity. The team is there for a week. You have festivities. You have volunteers that work year-round. It would be like the NFL playoffs. You would come in the night before the game. You would play the game, and then you would go on about your business to go to the next place. I don't know that bowl games would want to host playoff games. I mean, you just have to completely rethink the way you did it. Would it be exciting? Sure. Would it would it generate a lot of income? Absolutely. 
but I think it would destroy the bowl system uh, in college football. That's a pretty good argument. <laughs> Not bad. Marcus Walker able to get up and walk off under his own power. That's good to see. Yeah, absolutely. And if nothing else, Nebraska has come back from a more abundant existence. They were down 14 mm -hmm. nothing. It looked like they weren't going to get anything going. But that touchdown makes it a whole yeah. new night. When you see that Tostitos Fiesta Bowl is the destination for the winner tonight, it appears. And uh, the team that probably will be waiting there for him is that undefeated Boise State team. Taylor, a little screen, and Jackson is popped as soon as he touched it. And it was the conference player of the year on defense, Rufus Alexander, who just lit him up. The coaches say that Rufus is like a coach on the field, very instinctual, very smart, understands what they're doing defensively, led the team in tackles last year as well. 95 tackles, yeah. a lot of tackles. Ironically, he's out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Wanted to get away from home. Didn't want to. Was obviously recruited by LSU, but wanted to get away from home a little bit. He got all the way out to Norman, Oklahoma, away. Taylor has this one batted down, and it was the middle linebacker Zach Latimer who got his right hand up and knocked it away. And Walker will get an early trip to the Walker uh, to the locker room. Clock stops 234, third and seven. A couple of incomplete passes stops the clock for Oklahoma if they get a stop here and get the football back. This is where it's been tough for Nebraska today. Third and seven plus. Very difficult against this Oklahoma defense. They line up with three down linemen, but they're going to bring more than three most of the time. Taylor, good protection. Throwing that deep wow. back and has it intercepted. Right in the hands of DJ Wolf. And boy, he's jerking some good hand that time. He bobbled it and then hauled it in for the interception. Well, Zach Taylor got greedy on this one. He wanted to go for the third down, and this is a typical route where you have a corner route deep and you have an underneath route. And if the corner bites on the underneath route, then you throw the deep one behind him. But the corner didn't bite on the underneath route. He kept drifting back. And then he made a great interception on the football. And D.J. Wolf is in there for the injured Marcus yes. Walker, who we just saw, go, uh, just saw go to the locker room. So can Oklahoma take advantage of that break? They'll keep it on the ground. Patrick inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. That's the most space that Oklahoma has had running the football tonight. That play right there. They have not had much room to run the football. They've done a lot more damage throwing it than they have running it. And this is the number 14 rushing team in the country. And Nebraska's done a real good job of shutting that down. Quick pass complete to Manuel Jackson. And Jackson very close to the sticks, and they are indicating first down. At the 34 yard line. The winner of this game gets the automatic BCS bid to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Just the way it used to be. Nebraska and Oklahoma playing for a chance to go to the big one. Down the middle and just too far for Kelly. Good defense by Grixby that time at good position. Well, again, Paul Thompson has been pretty sharp throwing the football tonight. If he had this one back, he would have thrown it more to the middle of the field, away from the defender, and let Kelly separate to the football. But it was thrown back towards the defender, and that allowed Grixby to just get in enough and make enough contact to make it a tougher catch. And there's no safety in the middle to help lead your guy away from the defender. Second and ten. Thompson double clutches and takes off. Got a good block to give him a couple of extra seconds. This one is incomplete, however. I think the Oklahoma receivers have lost a little bit of their concentration here in the second quarter. In the first quarter, they were catching everything. In the second quarter, I think they've lost a little bit. I've seen more drops here. It's a young receiving group. And Paul Thompson's numbers have been affected because of that as well. I think he's put the ball in catchable places. 
but he hasn't gotten too many completions here recently. He's only hit one of his last eight. Now the officials are going to stop the clock with 1.23 to go. The one thing Nebraska has not been able to do is they've not been able to get a lot of pressure at all on Paul Thompson. Part of that has been it's been quick throws. Part of it has been that they've rolled him out and moved the pocket. Nebraska coming into the game with 25 sacks. That's half as many as they had last year. They led the nation with 50 sacks a year ago. No sacks tonight so far. They show blitzing and drop out of it. Still be able to get some pressure there. Iglesias will make the catch, but well short of a first down. Andre Jones on the coverage, and Jones is the guy who took over for the outstanding corner, Zach Bowman, when he was hurt at the beginning of the year. Andre Jones is a young man out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. Actually went to Kentucky. Transferred from Kentucky. Going for it on fourth down here. Got the ball down at the 30 yard line. That's that in between distance. And now we've got a timeout. Both teams have one left with 47 seconds to go in the half. Coming up at halftime, John Craig and Doug will have the scores and highlights, including the ACC and SEC championships, and let you know what happened to USC. Plus, we'll have the Dr. Pepper Million Dollar Challenge. See if Dolik can actually coach pass. There he is. Now we know if it was a donut eating contest, he's got a real shot. Sure, he took it seriously too. Absolutely. He's great on those commercials. Maybe yes, he he'll is. tackle him if he doesn't <laughs> knock him back. I mean, that'd, that'd be I'd be afraid of. Now they've got Hartley on the field. So this was a great stop by the Nebraska defense. Sudden change stop. They want to play safe right here, though. Make sure there's no tomfoolery here by Oklahoma. This kid has been brilliant. 17 out of 18. This will be his first of the year. They bobble. It was going to be a throw and incomplete. Yes, it was. Yep. And the ball came back to the holder after the bad snap. McEwen made the tackle, and now we got some pushing and shoving. And hopefully they'll be able to break that up. The snap dribbled back to the holder. Yeah. Yeah. The bad snap is what created the problem for Oklahoma. But I think this was going to be a fake anyway because it looked to me. Like the holder, Hayes McKetcher was was getting ready to pull out of there. Both these coaches are not opposed to using trick plays, but the bad snap just kind of blew that play up. They weren't able to execute it. I don't think this was just a reaction to the bad snap as much as it was an actual design fake. Dexter Shaw is the snapper. Hayes McKeecher. The holder. Now will Nebraska be able to do anything and they'll get out of bounds to stop the clock with 19 seconds to go in the half and Taylor after the completion to Brandon Jackson. Well they have one timeout left so they don't have to work exclusively on the sidelines here. That's Joe Gans, the backup quarterback who threw a threw a touchdown pass a week ago on a trick play. Yeah. Joe Gans is from the Chicago area, and when we talked to Zach Taylor, we asked him, "Are you wearing long sleeves tomorrow?" He said, "Well, my backup is from Chicago, and he wouldn't let me wear long sleeves when we played Texas, so it's kind of up to him." Well, he, he must have won again tonight. Taylor takes off and slides in, save at the 43-yard line, but that burned another eight seconds off the clock. And they'll have to out. use their last time out. Well, again, they're 
place kicker Jordan Congdon his longest is 40 yards so they're well out of his range I mean they'd have to get a couple big plays and only 11 seconds. They've done studies uh, if, if you complete a 25 yard pass it's going to take about 13 seconds for the offense to get downfield and spike the ball so uh, with 11 left doesn't look good except that if you get the throw to the sideline well or, or you get the first down they'll yeah. stop it temporarily right. early till they've remarked it but right. you've got to be there. Eleven seconds to go in the half, and both quarterbacks have done well. The numbers yeah. almost identical. Well, and Paul Thompson's interception led to the Nebraska touchdown. Mm -hmm. Zach Taylor's most recent interception uh, did not lead to a score. He was very fortunate there. Good stop by his defense. The fumble by Purify led to Oklahoma's first touchdown on the second play of the game. Certainly a tough way for Nebraska to start. I mean, you cannot, you're so fired up. Right. You've got 60 of the 80,000 people are cheering for you, and you fumble on the first snap, and then the other team scores on the first play from scrimmage. Well, you wonder here if, if Bill Callahan has some kind of a trick play here with 11 seconds. He ran six trick plays a week ago against Colorado. Sideline incomplete with six seconds left. Now your choices are very limited. Do you throw it again or just run it or take a knee and be careful? Well, I think you take another shot at it. I mean, the, the one thing you got to make sure, though, is you don't want your quarterback to take another big hit. He's been hit a few times in this yes, game pretty hard in the first half. So if you call something, I'd want to call something get it out of his hands a little quicker and not let him hang back in there and take a big shot here right before halftime. Taylor short set throw sideline complete for a couple of yards none makes the catch now there's only two seconds to go and that pretty much tells you they're just trying to get in position to throw a Hail Mary. Barring a penalty, the last play of the half coming. They have three receivers to the bottom, purify it by himself at the top. Taylor steps up under pressure, drilled from behind, the ball is loose. Picked up by Oklahoma, and I'll tell you what, if Rufus Alexander doesn't miss it, if he's able to scoop that ball, he might go. CJIU coming from behind got the sack and the forced fumble. Nearly a disaster. Let's check with Holly Rowe. Coach Callahan, your offense appears to be clicking a little bit better here in the second quarter. What's been the difference? Well, we put ourselves in the hole initially with that turnover and they scored and we've been trying to catch up. I think we could get into a little bit more of a patient game in the second half. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Hoping to break that 0 and 11 streak. Our score in halftime, Oklahoma 14-7. Let's go to John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie in New York with a Capital One halftime show. Mike, it's going to be more than a halftime show. <laughs> it's going to be quite a halftime discussion. We'll get into it more before, but here are the particulars. USC lost to UCLA. Florida beat Arkansas. Michigan did not play. So we're going to have a huge discussion about who should be facing Ohio State. What do you want to do? Start about right no, now? No, 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 just no, no, general. Just, I, I think, you know, just in general, you have to talk about USC. USC goes out and they get beat today. Then you have to figure out, well, okay, now is it going to be Florida who won? Or is it going to be Michigan who sat at home? And, yeah. and you know, it's an it's an interesting, and, lively debate and, going and all Craig, everywhere. Craig is going to tell us how uh, Michigan got worse today by sitting at home and how they're not a very good that. football team right now. I didn't say That's that. That's all right. No, we'll, no, we'll get into I, it a little I bit. I did not say that. As I said, it's going to be more than a <laughs> halftime show. It's going yeah. to be a debate. So stick around for the Capital One halftime show because when we come back, we'll discuss who should face those Buckeyes after these messages and a word from our ABC station. ESPN on ABC. 
Welcome back to Kansas City. We have a one touchdown game for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Oklahoma leading Nebraska 14 to 7. Oklahoma will get the ball first. Reggie Smith, number three, Joaquin Iglesias, number nine, are the deep men. For the kick of Jake Welsh. From the one, Reggie Smith cut down at the 14 yard line. I think if you're Nebraska at this point, you're probably pretty happy to start the third quarter only down by seven. You're down by seven on the scoreboard. You're down three to one in the turnovers. That's the one thing that they can't afford to lose again in the second half. I really think neither team ran the football worth a lick in the first half. Yeah. They're going to have to get something going, both teams, and whoever protects the football, that'll be a big key here in the second half. Starting from the 15 yard line will be the Sooners and Paul Thompson. Patrick cuts it outside. And takes it out across the 30, but this is going to be a holding call. I'm going to bring this one back a few yards. As Alan Patrick, who had a great junior college career, is both a uh, running back and a defensive back. The nickelback position in Oklahoma's defense is a critical position. They do a lot with them as far as pressuring the quarterback, coverage. And that was the position that Alan Patrick was originally slated to play. And Holding offense number 19. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. Joe John Finley, the tight end. It would have been the longest run of the night, but denied by the penalty. Let's take a look at tonight's Pacific Life game summary. And the yardage yeah. now piling up a little bit in Nebraska's favor. Well, and this number's a little deceiving. That 51 yards rushing from Nebraska, 31 of it came on one run by Brandon Jackson in the first half. So neither team ran with much success in the first half, and neither team off to a great start running in the second half. Fryer just came through the line and unloaded. Breyer, nobody blocked him. I mean, uh, that, that's easy to make that play in the backfield when nobody blocks you. A missed assignment up front for Oklahoma. It was not a blitz. It was not any particular fancy stunt. Just an unblocked defensive tackle making a play in the backfield. If you're a lineman in that situation, don't you have the sort of sneaky feeling that something's going on? Yeah, yeah like a wham player yeah, exactly. exactly. or something. Somebody's going <laughs> to ear hole you in a second, but not that time. Chris Brown didn't have a chance. Now they go to the shotgun slant way too high and nearly intercepted. Tier Green had a shot at it and Thompson let that one get away from him. Let's go to Holly. Guys, I caught up with Bob Stoops at halftime. I asked him, what do you have to do to get your running game going? He said, basically, we're not executing. He said, we're getting beat on the line of scrimmage. Guys are getting across our faces. He's very happy with how they're playing up front. He really said they've just got to do a better job on the offensive line. We didn't see it that series, guys. Maybe we can get a go next time. Okay, Holly, and they're averaging 188 yards yeah. a game on the ground. Not tonight. Well, this is an area of the field where Paul Thompson needs to be smart with the football. Backed up third and long near his own goal line. Smart with how he throws this. Under pressure. Down he goes at the five. And the pressure came from Jay Moore, number 44. The left defensive end gets his fifth sack of the year. And he had a bead on Paul yep. Thompson from the snap. The first sack of the game for Nebraska. He's working on the true freshman. It goes right around him. Trent Williams, number 71. A great get off that time by Jay Moore. And an excellent defensive series to start the second half for Nebraska. The sack by the senior from Elkhorn, Nebraska. Cohen will kick. Rixby is back and he's waiting in Oklahoma territory on this side of the 50. They're doubling both gunners. They want to try to get as much of a return here as they can. High floating kick. Fumbled, muffed, and recovered. Mm. 
Loss of five on the return. Griggs be able to cover it after a 37 yard punt. And a great field position in spite of the muff for Bill Callahan's offense. The one thing we have not seen Nebraska do much of or try much of and again part of it is this system it's a short passing game it's a lot of intermediate short to intermediate routes there have now been no vertical throws against this defense at all that look like we're gonna get one here simply because uh, we don't have a wide receiver in the ball game we've got a bunch of tight ends and a couple backs right now and everybody is within six yards of the line of scrimmage except the tailback this is exactly the way the game started. Gain of about four for Jackson. Corey Bennett made the tackle. How do you evaluate Zach Taylor's first half? Well, I think he's, he had a pretty good first half. It's a good defense. I think he held the ball a couple times uh, a little bit too long. And the, and the interception that he threw, I think he forced one in there. But I think for the most part, he's shown toughness and he's thrown an ability to make some plays when they needed him. And I think they got to get purified back in the game. He's been kind of quiet, and he's really a big play difference maker type receiver for them. And Oklahoma just burned a timeout. Brent Venables, defensive coordinator, not happy at all about it. No, he is really upset with his kids after that one. They blow a timeout really early third quarter. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Back in Kansas City, uh, Oklahoma just had to call a timeout. When we talked to Bill Callahan and we asked him, you know, why you do so much shifting in motion, watch as they shift the tight end. What they want to do is they want to make all these guys communicate on all different levels, the linemen, the linebackers, the defensive backs. They want to create some confusion, but they also want to make those guys communicate. And right there you see Rufus Alexander had to call timeout. They obviously weren't communicating very well, and they had to burn a timeout. But a lot of that shifting in motion that Nebraska does is to just get guys talking a little second guess and a little lack of communication and hope you can spring something on. Jackson with some room inside the 40 and Todd if you can just make them use a timeout mm -hmm. if nothing else you've accomplished your goal because yeah. those things are so valuable. Absolutely. Later. Absolutely, and, uh, and we talked about the running game, and we see both teams coming out trying to run a little bit. I, I really think if either team can gain 50 yards or more in the second half, it will it will make a huge difference in this game. Neither team ran the ball well. Now that guy right there, hmm. Adrian Peterson, would have helped the Oklahoma running game quite a bit. Third down, a little swing pass to Jackson, got a chance for a first down, and he got it. Bad tackling by Oklahoma. They had two guys converge on him, broke down. If they make the tackle, it's short of the first down. And Brandon Jackson, who has caught 26 balls coming into tonight, does a nice job after he catches the football. Watch him split the defender. And that's just like in basketball. If you try to come and trap and a guy dribbles through the trap and splits it, you can make a play. Brandon Jackson split the trap and got a first down. Jackson was fun to talk to the other day. Kids got a great smile, mm -hmm. wonderful attitude. They had used four different running backs this year, but he has become the guy. It's another carry. Drags a tackler with him inside the 30. This is a good drive yes. for Nebraska. Let's go to Holland. Well, guys, in talking to Zach Taylor, he said that when he was watching film of himself last year, trying to correct some of his mistakes, he realized he was too quick to run or too quick to throw it away because he'd see a back about five yards away from him. So he said this year he's made a much more concerted effort to find his backs, to be aware of they are and aware of where they are in that progression. And he's done a great job. Several of the backs have more than 20 receptions. And that's and Holly has done a lot for him too. Absolutely. Raised his completion percentage, has kept the offense alive. Yeah, it's hard to be efficient in the West Coast offense if you only complete around 50% of your passes. It has to be higher than that. Jackson, again, this time he's in this flat, and the ball's a little overthrown. Jackson upset with himself. Thought he'd have, have a shot at that. But once he had to go up in the air, he was going to be a cannon fodder for those defenders coming up. 
You talked about visiting with Brandon Jackson. I, I got a kick out. He, he, he came out of high school from Horn Lake, Mississippi, <laughs> but he moved there from Chicago when he was 10 years old. I asked him, you know, going from Chicago, what did you think when you got to Mississippi? Culture shock. He said, well, two things. It was hot, and I didn't see any <laughs> sidewalks. <laughs> a little different. Third and seven. With a shovel pass, Jackson. They're going to be about a yard short. Rufus Alexander made the tackle. What do you do here? It would be a 42-yard field goal. I think you go for it. You go for it? Yeah, I think you go for it. This is a, this would be a long field goal for Congdon. Sometimes on longer kicks, you don't get the necessary height. Looks like they are going to kick it. Got to make sure you get that ball up. Now again. Bill Callahan six trick plays last week. One of them was a fake field goal for a touchdown. But when they ran that fake last time, it was the backup quarterback, Joe Gans, who was in as the kicker. This would be a career long for Jordan Condon, who has only made five out of seven this year. That's what I thought. And it's stuffed. Ball's loose, picked up by Lindy Holmes. Lindy Holmes for Oklahoma. Partner, you well. call. They're blowing the whistle down here somewhere. DeMarcus Granger with the block. Lindy Holmes with the recovery. But there is a flag down. Let's check it. I wonder if that's delay a game if they didn't get the playoff in 25 seconds. Oh. If it is, it's a huge break for Nebraska. I think the play clock may have run out. Part of the snap. Delay. Offense. Holy Five cow. Yard the only reason I didn't like this call was because, you know, his long in the season is 40. Right. And you put him back beyond that, and he's trying to drill it. He's not going to get the height. Now, that wasn't very good protection either on the inside, but that ball didn't have much lift. What an enormous break. <laughs> you make a mistake, don't get the kickoff in time, and it saves you a touchdown. Now they're going to go for it. Fourth and seven, and why not? They're down at the 30-yard line. Now fourth and seven still much more difficult than fourth and two. This is as much a testament to Bill Callahan's defense as it is to his offense. Pressure coming. Looked like Oklahoma jumped early. Well, so did the left tackle. Chris Patrick, number 54, moved, and I think they, they called it a dead ball penalty. Now, he's saying he moved because he was drawn into movement by the rush. Which I think he's got a point. False start. Offense. 74. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Watch this guy come across the line, and that's going to cause Patrick to lift out of his stance. Oh, you're right. Patrick gets called for the penalty. Now they're going to punt because now instead of fourth and two or fourth and seven, it's fourth and 12. And this is a good good move now to punt the football. When a player comes across, that is seen as inducing an offensive lineman to move. And that's exactly what that looked like. Now Titchener will punt the ball to Smith. But no matter what happened on the ensuing plays, what a huge break that that play was blown dead because of the delay of game. Otherwise, it's a 21-7 game. As it is now, it's 14-7. Oklahoma has the ball back. What a beautiful area. That's the uh, plaza in Kansas City with all the stores and restaurants lit up. It's just so pleasant to be down there during the holiday period. My wife Sherry's from Kansas City. That's her favorite part of the, of the city is the plaza at Christmas time all lit up. I can understand why. It's beautiful. Really pretty with that snow on Thursday. Yes, it was. Oklahoma will start from its seven. Patrick oh, tries oh, the outside. Oh, There's oh. that guy again, Jay Moore. Loss of five, and he just would not be yeah. denied. You look at the last six Oklahoma possessions, only 78 yards, and they're and they're going backwards to start this possession. Jay Moore. 
Coming across the line of scrimmage, just whipping the right tackle. Again, that's a true freshman, Trent Williams, that he's working against, and he's played pretty well this year, but he's going against a different cat tonight. Against these two defensive ends, Carriker and Jay Moore, both seniors, both big physical guys. And they both can dominate games from those defensive end spots. Thompson hands it off to Patrick, and he plows his way across the five to maybe the six. Corey McEwen made the tackle. Let's check in with Matt Weiner. Matt? On ESPN, Rutgers in West Virginia with the Big East title and a BCS spot at stake. Rutgers has taken the lead, but could have had more. James Townsend couldn't hang on to the Mike Teal pass. They settle for the Jeremy Ito field goal, and right now, Rutgers is a minute 36 away from a BCS spot. Certainly Pat White. His absence is huge. Big play, third and 12. You take a chance on throwing it down here if you're Paul Thompson? Well, I think he's proven that you can trust him to make a good decision. Takes off this time. And only got to the 14-yard line. They'll have to give it up on downs. <laughs> This Nebraska defense has really asserted itself, really from the second quarter on, pretty much. After that 66-yard yeah. pass, where they got him, you know, on a one-play transition, ever since then, this Nebraska defense has settled into the game and has controlled, absolutely controlled the line of scrimmage. Cohen, who has been fortunate to get away with some poor kicks. You know, part of that is this Oklahoma offensive line, three sophomores and a true freshman, and all four defensive line for Nebraska, all yeah. seniors. I mean, they, they've got a lot of experience and a lot of beef up there. High snap. Cohen just got it out of there. Good kick this time, and Grixby forced back to his own 47. 39-yard punt, no return. Catch one of the hottest new comedies of the season, starring Jonathan Silverman, David Arquette, Greg Norman, and Lori Lo uh, Greg German, excuse me, and Lori Laughlin. Everyone needs a little life support in case of emergency. This coming in January. I think it's very important for Nebraska not to waste another field position opportunity. The last possession, their defense held. They got it on the 46-yard line of Oklahoma and did nothing with it. This time, they get it back on their side of the 50. But still excellent field position. They need to take advantage of it. Jackson broke the tackle. Uses that speed. Picks up 11. He's got a first down. Darian Williams, the free safety, the third leading tackler on this team, makes the tackle on Brandon Jackson. Watch the movement along the line of scrimmage. It's kind of a zone play. Good blocking on the second level by the tight ends and the wide receivers. That's the, the one thing. Ten, uh, Nebraska uses a bunch of different combinations with tight ends and wide receivers blocking on the edges. And uh, excellent job getting to the second level by those guys on that play. Since becoming the starter, Jackson has averaged over 103 yards a ball game. And he seems to be hitting his rhythm right here. Drilled as he got inside the 40-yard line by Rufus Alexander. And Jackson a little slow to get up. He's holding his hand or yeah. his wrist at the end of that play. 13 carries, 70 yards tonight. You know, one thing that's kind of interesting about these different backs for Nebraska is they're all kind of the same. And, and even when we talked to Brent Venables, he said, hey, we treat all four of them the same. They all do the same thing. None of them stand out different than the others. And Jackson's been kind of the workhorse, but they're all about the same size, too. Right around 6'1", 200 pounds. Doesn't change what they do. Kenny Wilson is the new man. Wilson on the toss. Tries to get outside and can't. Tough to run on the perimeter against this defense. Yes, it is. Too much speed. Yeah, too much speed. Their success has been running at the tackles and then a, maybe a bounce outside if they get the edge block, but just a toss to the perimeter. Not very uh, high chance of success against this defense. Another big third down play for Nebraska. Again, the good field position. You've got to take advantage of it. It's, it's in your favor right now. There's no guarantee you're going to keep this field position yeah. for the rest of the second half. You only get so many opportunities. They've squandered a couple before.
blitz coming. Taylor steps up and throws incomplete. Intended for Purify, but he was well covered. Yeah. Nick Harris was applying the pressure. The nickel corner coming on a blitz. I'm impressed with the coverage of Oklahoma. I mean, for the most part, uh, Zach Taylor has not been able to just plant his foot and throw to open receivers on third down. I mean, he's had to move around and create extra time and extra space for himself. Excellent coverage. A lot of zone coverage, but they really covered up the spots back there against this Nebraska pass game. And Taylor has hit only eight of his last 20. Smith deep again. Titchener tries to lay it up toward the oh, corner. Beautiful. And it will be downed inside the five-yard line. That's Reggie beautiful. Smith. Excuse me, Ricky the Nars. Great special teams play, a 40-yard punt, and no return. Oklahoma, lousy field position the entire second half. This time they start from the one. Three other drives from the 15 and the eight. Three drives total. Nothing has even reached close to the 20-yard line. Well, I might think play action and try to throw the ball to Malcolm Kelly. He's isolated out there on Grixby again right now. Only six of his last 16 wants to throw. Floats this one out there and nearly intercepted by Shanley. Well, they tried, but again, the use called it. The ball, the ball did float out of there a little bit too much. He's trying to go the little hitch and go again. This time, Grixby stays in his course. And Shanley comes over and almost gets his second interception of the night. And Grigsby is entitled to that space as long as he doesn't cut off the route. And he didn't. He just stood his ground. That's why that pass was long. Brown is the tailback. He'll get the carry. Boy, boy. And he got a safety. Drilled at the and line of the out. Now they're going to mark him just inside the one. Oh. Wasn't by much, was it? They give you forward progress pretty quickly on a play like yes. this. They are loath to call safety. Yeah. The ball was snapped on the one. He's out. Barely. Oh. I mean, he is inside the one. He actually lost a half a yard yeah. on the play. Brown has had four carries in this game. One for minus four. The other for zero. He has been stuffed every time he touched it. And Nebraska's defense starting to dominate. Play action. Oh, what a call. What a play. The complete pass to the tight end. Jermaine Gresham, what a beautiful fake by Thompson. And they gained 35. That's a huge play. We actually had both tight ends. Brody Eldridge, number 83, was also open. Here's the guy who's going to get the ball. He's going to just come off the play action. Jermaine Gresham, wide open off this play action. Good job by Thompson hiding the ball and then coming up throwing. He had either tight end for an easy first down on that play. And a little breathing room now for the Oklahoma offense. And a good block by Chris Brown, who caught a blitzer and gave his quarterback a chance to throw it. Pressure coming. Another complete pass. This to Iglesias. Boy, and Thompson hung in there. He knew he was going to take a shot. Stuart Bradley applying pressure. Well, this is a mismatch because this is a wide receiver, Iglesias, and this is a linebacker, Stuart Bradley. And as he runs the corner route, he's working against a linebacker out in space. That's a tough assignment for a linebacker staying with a wide receiver. That's different than a tight end or a running back coming out of the backfield. And another big throw for Paul Thompson. And all at once, Oklahoma has come alive offensively. Thompson again on a half roll. Another complete strike. This one to Kelly. 
seven catches tonight for Malcolm Kelly, which takes him to 59 for the year. He has been the big player receiver. Well, his best game of the year was against Texas Tech. He had 11 catches for 153 yards. Gets away with a little bit of a, of a push, but he's a big, strong receiver. And right now, the last three throws in a row, you've seen the confidence come back to Paul Thompson. He's throwing it on time. He's throwing it with velocity and accuracy. Patrick back in as the tailback lowers his head and pounds down to the 30. Well, after the first two plays, they're stuck at the one foot right. line. It didn't look like they were going to get out of there at all. And how much trust does Kevin Wilson and Bob Stoops have in this fifth-year senior quarterback yes, who was sir. a wide receiver last year in this ball game at that moment to call a play-action pass on third down from your own half-yard line? Look at this. The last four plays, they are only 15 yards shy of what they had gained the previous 32 plays. And if nothing else, they have turned the field over. Thompson has been so accurate on the run. Throws a perfect strike. And here's another first down. This kid has been sensational. Adrian Tunnell. Adrian Tunnell does a nice job of using his body to shield the defender. He kept the defender Grixby away and made the catch because the ball was thrown a little bit behind the receiver. But Trinnell did a nice job of shielding the defender with his body and catching the ball with his hands. Thompson has been much better on the move yeah. than he has been yeah. in the pocket. That's his comfort zone. Rolling out, having a run pass option, throwing on the move. He times things up a little better that way. Another first down. Here, Here we go down. again. Another perfect strike. Kelly at the five and then knocked back toward the 10 yard line. His eighth grand. Well, that was a great catch because this ball was thrown behind Kelly. Watch Kelly reach back and snag it. I mean, mm. that is pretty. Mm. That looked like uh, a catch Dwayne Jarrett made against Notre Dame last week. Sure I don't know if he made any today, but big time catch right there by Kelly. Mark it at the five, first and goal. He gets four straight rollouts. Let's go to Holly Rowe, Holly. Well, guys, it wasn't that long ago this drive started at the one half yard line. But talking to Paul Thompson's dad and mom, Mark and Felisa, who are at home in Texas watching this game, they said he's just been a laid back, unflappable kid his whole life. His dad recalled a junior high school basketball game. It was a big game. The place was packed, and he hit the game winning shot. The place was going crazy, and he just walked over to his dad. Hey, game's over. Let's go. No big deal. So this guy's been unflappable his whole life. Well, he certainly gave this team what it needed, and we've got an injury timeout as uh, T.R. Green, the strong safety, comes off very slowly for Nebraska. Gave this team exactly what it had to have after Rhett Bomar was kicked off the team because he had been moved to wide receiver, and they asked him, they said, it's your decision. Would you come back and play quarterback? And he was giving up what he thought was his best shot at the NFL as a wide receiver, and he did it. And right now, not very far away from winning game number 11, we're going to a BCS bowl game as the Big 12 champion. Thompson again, wide open. The fullback dropped the ball. Zaslaw was wide open in the flat. His sixth catch of the year would be for a touchdown, and he couldn't hold it. It's a little bit high. But a catchable pass. You see the fullback slipping out wide open. Paul does a nice job getting the ball to him quickly, but just not able to connect. Brian Wilson came over and got a hit on him. But he should have had that. A big play right here now for both Nebraska defense. The red zone offense for Oklahoma, the best in the league coming into tonight. They're one for one in red zone opportunities already tonight. Third and goal. That's quarterback draw here, too. Thompson sets, throws for Kelly. Wow. The in or out of bounds. The yeah. officials looking at each other. They say touchdown. 
They took their time to make the call. Grixby was the defender. This is just rise up and throw the fade to your big receiver. And remember, you only have to get one foot in in college football. He throws it up for him. Catch. Foot. Yep. Right there. Touchdown. Excellent catch and call by the officials. The ninth catch for Kelly. 125 yards. A Big 12 championship record. Again, that's 6-4 working against 5-9 on a jump ball. I mean, I'd take my chances with yes, that, too. Sir. So Oklahoma, which was being stuffed at its own one-yard line, goes 99 in 11 plays, 3 minutes and 21 seconds, and hats off to Thompson, who was tremendous on that drop. How about it? Timeout, Nebraska. That's their first charge time out of the half. I wonder why they called a timeout there unless they're hoping that this gets reviewed. I think they're reviewed. hoping for a review. That's the only reason I would think is why would you call it on an extra point try? Yeah. And obviously he doesn't, you know, you have to call a timeout to challenge. And I don't know if he wants to use that or not, but. Of course, what they're playing for right here is a chance to go to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, the Big 12 champion. And it will either be Nebraska or Oklahoma gets the automatic bid to that BCS game. And that's exactly what uh, Bill Callahan was trying to do. If not challenge, at least give them yeah. more time to look at. It. Well, it, it looked close, but it was a beautifully thrown ball by Thompson. And watch Kelly. Left foot is down clearly. Then the right foot's down out of bounds, but he only needed that one in, and he has possession of the football when he gets the foot down. What's well, a nice job by Kelly, and you can look at his yeah. hand on his head. I mean, as if he needed help elevating, he kind of sprung off the helmet there. of Grixby. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with Paul Thompson. I'm impressed with his leadership, his poise. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Holly? Well, guys, I was standing right where the catch was made. There's no question his foot was in bounds, but Bill Callahan, during that timeout, just stood there with his offensive players and talked to the referee, kind of waiting to see, it seemed like, if they were going to stop it and review it. No such luck. They are looking at it in the booth, but they did not stop play on the field for an official review, so wasted timeout. You're right, Holly. And that puts them down two scores with 125 to go in the third quarter. And the point after is good. One of the most impressive drives we have seen all year yeah. long. And again, you, you, you wonder when Nebraska doesn't take advantage of the field position. Two possessions in a row, they get nothing out of it. And then when it looks like they were going to get the ball back one more time in great field position, Oklahoma goes 99. And if Oklahoma goes on to win this game, you're going to have to take a look back at what they went through this year in order to reach this point. In the preseason, Red Bomar and J.D. Quinn were kicked off the team. Then they had that controversial loss to Arkansas on the butchered officials call. Then Adrian Peterson, just to add injury to insult, broke his collarbone halfway through the season. And still, they won their last seven ball games. And I go back to what you said at the beginning of this broadcast and what you've been saying all week is that nobody has done a better job than Bob Stoops all year, and I have to agree with you. Yeah, I mean, what he's done to keep this team focused, to keep them together, to play their best football down the stretch. I mean, he's proven that he's a great coach already during his tenure earlier at Oklahoma, but I think this year's job of coaching may be the best that he's done there. And you, you know, it's a young team, too. I mean, this team only had 11 seniors, the smallest senior class in the Stoops' tenure at Oklahoma. 13 of the starting 22 have at, at least two years of eligibility remaining. So, I mean, it's a oh, very yeah. young, talented team that he's got in Oklahoma right well, now. Well, it's pretty hard to say it might be his best coaching job because he's 85 and 15. I know. I know. So he's done a pretty good coaching yeah. job every year. 
But you're right. This is a very young football team with a chance to get a lot better. We have a record crowd watching this one. 80,031. Lucky and Wilson are deep. And Nebraska is going to have to rebound from what has to be a heart-wrenching drive when they appeared to have everything going their way, and it turned out just the opposite. Checking with Matt Weiner. Matt? Hi, Mike. Overall on ESPN, we're going to have overtime in Morgantown. West Virginia tied it on a field goal. Rutgers with a 52-yarder, but Jeremy Ito on a cold night couldn't get it to carry. It comes up short. We're headed to OT. Tied at 23. All right. Thank you, Matt. If we have OT here, we're going to need Nebraska to cooperate on offense. They have blown some opportunities. And time will soon become a factor. Taylor steps up against the pressure. Throws underneath to Kenny Wilson, and he's brought down after a very short game. Hope you'll stay tuned for your local late news immediately following the game over most of these ABC stations. Over on ESPN, we'll have Sports Center with post-game analysis, along with all the scores and highlights of the day. And it all starts with the Bruins stunning the number two Trojans. A rematch for the BCS title, it could be. Michigan against Ohio State again. And is it another BCS disaster? Does the current system work at all? Neil Everett, Scott Van Pelt, with Sports Center after the game. Taylor with all day. Now he takes off. 35 40, first down. Gutsy play by Zach Taylor. Zach Taylor. They needed a big play. He's not known as a scrambler, or a very mobile guy. But he is a winner and a competitor, and he competed for a first down right there. Maybe it'll give them a lift going to the fourth quarter. This presentation of the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship continues after this and a word from our ABC stations. Take a look at our Dr. Pepper stats after three quarters, and in spite of only 23 yards rushing, Oklahoma is now up 21 to 7 over Nebraska. And Big Red will start from the 45-yard line. 15 minutes to go. Paul Thompson uh, approaching the numbers he had in the Texas Tech game. That's when he threw for 309 yards in that ball game. Now it's up to Zach Taylor. Here comes pressure. Taylor steps up. Swift makes the catch. And the sophomore forced out of bounds. Swift only has 19 catches this year as opposed to the 45 he had last year which was number three on the single season list at Nebraska. Of course considering the number of times they threw the ball yeah. being on the single season list wasn't all that hard. <laughs> Still haven't been able to get purified very much no. involved. He's had a couple catches. No big plays, nothing similar to what Malcolm Kelly has done on the other side for Oklahoma. Yeah, and he's the same kind of player. Purifies the guy who came in averaging 19 and a half yards a catch. That one's tipped away from Smith by the middle linebacker, Zach Latimer. Got a fingertip on him. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, for Nebraska, they have just taken running back Brandon Jackson to the locker room for x-rays on his hand. He heard it a while ago. He's been sitting here on the bench, and he actually told his running back coach, I'm okay, I'm okay, I can get back in there. But he wasn't okay. Finally, they have relented, and they've taken him to the locker room for an x-ray, guys. That yeah, took a direct hit from a helmet on that hand. Boy, that's got to hurt. Taylor to the shotgun. Pressure coming. Pretty good protection. Ouch. What a shot. Holmes just tripled Terrence Nunn. Well, that's one of those cases where the receiver is kind of helpless. The ball's up in the air. He's got to go up to extend to get it. And he, he didn't catch it clean. And so as he, as he was trying to re-catch it. That's going to leave a mark. And it's incomplete on top of it. Lendy Holmes, who they say 
has gotten better and better ever since they moved him to defensive back from wide receiver. If hitting has anything to do with it, amen. Taylor trying to keep this going. Jumps that one off to Wilson. They talked about earlier. That's that's the next step that Zach Taylor has yep. taken in his development as a quarterback. Look downfield, look downfield, and your last read on the progression is the dump off to the back. Watch Zach Taylor. He's going downfield. He wants to go for a big play. It's not there, but look, that's just as good. Maybe he breaks a tackle, and now we got a first down. And Wilson, not much of a pass receiver. Jackson was the guy they threw so many to, as well as Marlon Lucky when he was in there playing tailback. Taylor again sets in the pocket, goes for the end zone, and then overthrown. That was intended for Peterson. Good coverage by Marcus Walker, who was shaken up earlier in this game. Oklahoma trying to rotate two, three defensive linemen at a time because when you have to rush the passer every down, it takes a lot of steam out of you as a defensive lineman. Trying to keep fresh legs in. Here comes a couple more guys coming into the lineup. Keep as many fresh bodies as you can to rush Zach Taylor here on this drive. Second and ten. There's that shifting we talked about earlier, trying to make the defense make last minute changes and possibly line up in the right place. And now Taylor, as he sees both wide receivers going back to whence they came, has to use another timeout. You're watching ESPN on ABC. For so many years, it meant so much. Oklahoma, Nebraska. The biggest game of the year for both schools. Championships, bowls on the line, great players, great coaches, great traditions, and it's back. Tonight, it means everything again. The Big 12 Championship and a spot in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Good to have Oklahoma and Nebraska back. Nebraska trying to keep this drive alive. They need two touchdowns to tie. Down to the 21-yard line. They need to reach the 15 for a first down. Good tackle by Lendy Holmes on the tailback, Wilson, who has caught two passes on this drive. I think you're in four-down territory here if you're Nebraska, too. I mean, you're not thinking about a field goal right here. You're thinking about getting in the end zone, Getting a first down, so you've got two plays to get what you need here. Five yards. A little, it's like a shade over five. Taylor will go to the shotgun. Jackson, that big weapon, has been out with a bad hand. Taylor steps up, has a chance to run, and does. His hesitation, I think, Cost him a first down. Latimer make the tackle about half a yard shy of the marker. There's only a three-man rush. Oklahoma dropping eight into coverage. So there's a lane there right away for Taylor. And you're right, he hesitates a little bit. And he, again, he's not known as a scrambler. And if you're not particularly fast or quick and you're not known as a scrambler when you hesitate, it's even tougher. Yeah. Huge play here, fourth and less than a yard. They have to keep the drive going. And they want to throw for it. Taylor's in trouble. Got rid of it and completed the pass. No, it's incomplete now. They're calling it incomplete. Holy cow. Well, Taylor was lucky to even get this pass off because Demarcus Granger was right in on it. I mean, that I don't even know how he got the throw. I don't off. either. But he got it away, and it looked like Tifa Tiller had it. What an effort. 
and couldn't hold it on the way down. He was drilled by Demario Pleasant. Yeah. And that is a saving tackle after Taylor with a nearly superhuman yep. effort. Which is one thing to get it out of his hand, but he put it where the guy could catch it. Brent Venable says that the development of Granger has really solidified their defensive front. That was a big time play. Huge stand by that Oklahoma defense. And now they'll go back to work on offense. Patrick brought down by Braden Birch. Even though Oklahoma has not done much run, uh, running the football tonight at all, at this point they would like to burn some clock. So, if nothing else. Yeah. I mean, at this point you've got a two score lead. You got to run the football a little bit or safe possession passes. You don't want your receivers going out of bounds. You want them to get as much as they can, but stay in bounds. Let's use the clock to our advantage right now a little bit. Tier Green was the player who's shaken. The junior from Omaha. Well, that 99-yard drive was what I'll remember so far out of this ball game. That really turned this thing around. It looked like old Mo had really shifted yeah. to Nebraska and Oklahoma just snatched it away. Fumbled snap and they'll cover it. Thompson didn't take any chances yeah. just pounced on it. Well here's that 99 yard drive you were talking about and it started with the third down play and if they don't make that one they don't get anything but then Paul Thompson making throws all over the field moving to the left throwing with confidence Malcolm Kelly making some big catches and then the touchdown to Malcolm Kelly. Kelly's had a huge night Thompson has been tremendous, particularly on those rollouts. Making another opportunity right here. Hands it to Patrick. Being very conservative, and why not? They're yeah. up by two touchdowns. Yep. Burn some clock. Take your time. Your defense has played well. Oh, and, and you force Nebraska into a throw almost every down game. Yeah. So, I mean, it plays into your strength as a defense. Let your defense play. And that, that really, aside from the fact that they've thrown the football today, that's been their formula for success in this seven-game winning streak. Play to the strength of their defense. And don't let your offense uh, put you in bad spots. Well, once again, Oklahoma is going to have to kick from deep in its own territory. And Grixby waits at his own 45, and they're just going to milk this clock as much as they can. Fair catch made it to 49 yard line. Again, tremendous field position for Nebraska, but they have yet to take advantage of it. 21 7, Sooners, 9 31 to go for a championship. Wait a minute, he's not done yet. He's not done. <laughs> Watch this. Now Todd had one of these. This is the second one he ordered. <laughs> hey, that's that's to and go. they wrapped it up and it's that's a to go order. to the Sheraton Suites that's after this game to go. <laughs> Sitting outside my door. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh, you could eat that one. I've seen you. Well, you got to love what Oklahoma has done in this ball game. Starting field position has been almost non-existent in the second half. Nebraska has been near midfield every time they've gotten the ball and they can't score. Well, they better score here because they need to score twice and they need to do it rather soon. Marlon Lucky is the new tailback and he'll get the screen. Lucky with a blocker in front. Cuts back. Nice Marlon Lucky all the way to the 20 a gain of 31. That's only the second time they've tried to run a screen tonight. That's been a big part of their success this season. The first time they ran it, it was snuffed out pretty quickly. This one develops well. Zone defense, that opens up some space to get those linemen out on some blocks. 
And Lucky does a nice job just being patient with it and setting up his blocks on the screen. But a great first play on this drive for the Huskers. That was a perfect word, Todd, because he was very patient in getting out to get the screen to start with. And the tendency's got to be there to rush. Got to go. No, inside. Threw it inside. Yes, he did, and it was nearly intercepted, and it is. It's a touchback picked off by Nick Harris, the nickelback. That ball needed to have a little more mustard on it. Well, I think Zach Taylor knew the corner was whipped, and he threw it right away, and the ball just kept drifting inside. And the more it drifted inside, the more it enabled the safety to come over and make a play. Nick Harris, you want to keep that ball outside. See, as it drifts in, that enabled the safety to come right in front of the intended receiver and make the pick. Swift was open, and the ball just hung there. And you're right, it went inside, and it gave... Nick Harris a chance for his fourth interception and he made a beautiful diving catch. So once again, Nebraska squanders tremendous field position and Oklahoma has the football right back. And tonight probably Zach Taylor would tell you this is his worst game of the year. Two interceptions, only had four picks in the 12 previous games. That was a good read. It was a good decision. Yep. The ball just, it just came inside too far. If he throws it out by that pylon, it's a touchdown. And we have an injured player and a flag down. We will check on the situation. It's Trent Williams, the uh, starting right tackle, the true freshman who is down. We'll check on his condition when we come back to Kansas City. Trent Williams still down, and they're uh, working on his right leg. Yeah, it was a, a situation where he just kind of got leg whipped by his own guy, Brandon Walker, number 73, is going to leg whip him. Here's, here's Trent Williams, and watch as this play just unfolds. 73 is going to just kind of roll back into him and whip his left leg there, accidentally, of course. And they're going to take him off on, uh, on the cart. Remember, Trent Williams is the starting right tackle because they lost Brandon Braxton to a broken ankle in the Colorado game. He was their original starter at right tackle, a sophomore. And we certainly hope it's uh, less of an injury than it looks and wish that young man from Longview, Texas, all the best. There was a holding penalty also on Oklahoma so the ball's back on the 10 yard line and yet another challenge for this Nebraska defense can they get the ball back to the to their offense again clock moving at 820 left in the ball game Chris Mester will move from left tackle to right tackle and Brian Simmons will come in and play that left tackle spot Kelly with another catch he's now in double digits you know, they let Malcolm Kelly get away with some pushing. He, he does kind of push off a little bit at the end of his route, but he's a tough guy to handle, and, and Paul Thompson obviously has tremendous confidence in Malcolm Kelly. Ten carries, 142 yards. Watch here at the end of the route. He's going to push off right there before he breaks out. Excuse me, ten catches, 142 yards. Both records for the Big 12 championship game. Second down, three yards to go. Time now a huge factor. 7-28. Oklahoma leads by two scores. Patrick stays inbounds. He'll be shy of the first down. Corey McEwen, who'd been bothered by a bad ankle for several games, made the tackle. Very good middle linebacker. 
I just can't say enough about Paul Thompson and the way he's played. There was a stretch there where it looked like he was kind of getting out of out of yeah. sync and wasn't thrown as well. And boy, he got it back on that drive. And his quarterback coach, position coach, is Josh Heupel, who is also an outstanding quarterback here at Oklahoma. Won a Big 12 championship game here against Kansas State, and then went on to win a national championship against Florida State. Play action. They wanted to throw in the flat. Now they'll get down the nice middle and knock away. Shanley. Shanley's had a big game. Yeah, he has. From that was that a safety nice play. spot. That'll force him to punt with 631 to go. <laughs> and Nebraska's down to uh, probably its last two shots. Yeah. They had been so successful with that play action fake and then the throw in the flat. Uh, that's where he looked first. It wasn't there. The only thing bad for Oklahoma is they have not been able to eat up much clock because they haven't run and haven't been able to run. And then when they throw in complete passes, that drive only 215. Wow, how did they miss that? Bad snap, but he was able to get it out of there. Grixby on the return. Horse collar taken down after a return of four. When know. we come back, Todd Blackledge will let you know his top candidates for National Coach of the Year. Will Bob Stoops be one of them? <laughs> Oklahoma still leading this ball game, 21 to 7, 6:22 left in the game. Time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. Scores and highlights with John Craig and Doug back in New York. Well, here we are again for Nebraska. Excellent field position. So far in the second half, they've started on the Oklahoma 46, their own 47, 28, 49, and 43, and nothing mm. to show for it. No points. Great field position, zero points. And that's hats off to the Oklahoma defense. Zach Taylor's got to make it happen here. Screen. Once again, the speed of Lucky to see if they can get a big play out of it. Lucky's got a first down at the 44-yard line. Clock stopped temporarily because of that. Nebraska has only one timeout left in its pocket. The other guy who's been very quiet for Nebraska is Matt Harry in the tight end number 11. No catches tonight. Taylor throws a pull at that time down to the 32. Complete to none. The good thing about this kind of a drive is as long as you're getting first downs, that clock stops till they reset the chains. Mark the ball ready for play. Another first down. Clock rolling again. Certainly not eating up much time so far in this drive. Blitz coming. Oh, and Taylor threw it right to Zach Latimer. And just because he's a middle linebacker, he didn't get it. I just think he was so surprised the ball came to him. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like he, I mean, it, it was thrown to Latimer. It looked like Latimer was running the out route. He'll never get an easier one. Zadimer does have, or Latimer does have, three interceptions this year. One of them in return for a touchdown. Excellent protection for Taylor this time. Goes for the end zone, underthrown, and intercepted by Reggie Smith. He had a man and didn't get it there. The third pick. He has suffered tonight. Well, Nebraska's had his chances, Todd. Well, they've had their chances, and they've had the field position. And this Oklahoma defense in the secondary has been up for the challenge. I mean, they have covered these guys extremely well. Reggie Smith is the free safety. Here he is right in here. They're going to run to the corner, and he's open. But the ball is slightly underthrown, and Reggie Smith is going to just kind of slip underneath the throw. Receiver didn't help much. He kept drifting towards the end zone as well, but 
the ball was under throw. You see the consternation on Taylor's face. He's just not used to this. No, he has well. played so smart all year long. Four interceptions coming into tonight's game and three tonight. Oklahoma uses a timeout and that stops the clock with 5.06 left. Nebraska can only stop it one more time. And Oklahoma on this possession, you would think, would definitely be working on the clock and nothing else. Glad you could join us for the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship game. The winner automatically advances to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl game. Where they will perhaps, and we say perhaps, face Boise State. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Matt? All right, Mike. Triple overtime in Morgantown, Rutgers in West Virginia. Mountaineers up by eight. Ray Rice bangs his way in. They need the two-pointer to tie. They have to go for it anyway. Mike T rolling, looking, broke it up. West Virginia hangs on 41-39. That means Louisville wins the Big East and the BCS Bowl ticket. Huge win for Louisville. Big win for West Virginia without yeah, Pat White. Absolutely. He's such an integral part of that offense. And after the devastating loss to South Florida oh, last yeah. week at home, I mean, it's a, it's a gutty comeback win for West Virginia tonight. I thought there was a real chance they'd go in the tank on that one. I mean, not a whole lot to play for, except for pride, and they, uh, they should be very proud of what they did. And now the Sooners. Just want to see that clock turn. Chris Brown to the carry stayed in bounds. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Holly? Guys, just before the offense took the field for this series for Oklahoma, Paul Thompson, their quarterback, their leader, went up and down the line of offensive guys sitting on the bench and said, guys, one drive for a ring, baby. One drive for a ring. Of course, his meaning is not lost. They've just got to milk the clock out here, have one good drive to get this thing in the bank. You're absolutely right. I'd be very surprised if they throw the football again. That last drive, they threw it on third and one and stopped the clock with the incomplete. Of course, they got it back with the interception. At this point, now run the football. Use as much clock as you can. See Paul Thompson keeping his team in the huddle as long as he can. That's really smart by the quarterback. Because a lot of times, you bring him to the line of scrimmage, and then you make him wait at the line of scrimmage. I think it's much better if you want to kill the clock, keep him in the huddle, break the huddle with your normal tempo, your normal routine, then come to the line and snap the football. Well, you might be surprised if they throw. I'd be stunned if they throw. <laughs> okay. Well, they just forced Nebraska to use their last timeout. No. They'll have it. I mean, it was odd enough that they, they threw on the last series when they could have burned another 40 seconds off the clock. And Bill Callahan knows he's going to need a miracle at this point. This we're under four minutes. Chris Brown, the tailback. He'll get the carry. The other thing you got to tell your guys if you're Oklahoma, if you're Paul Thompson in the huddle, you tell Chris Brown or Alan Patrick, whoever's in the game, protect that football. The only thing that could get us beat right now is if we put it on the ground and they scoop it and score or, or get a, a quick touchdown and get the ball back. Otherwise, we've got this game if we just do what we need to do right here. This would be the 11th win of the year for Oklahoma. They came in as the eighth ranked team in the country. But they were not listed in the top 10 in the BCS. They won the South Division of the Big 12 for the fifth time this year. And right now, got a leg up on the championship. And Thompson very carefully carrying that ball. Our Dr. Pepper Big 12 update presented by Dr. Pepper. And here are the bowl eligible teams. Nine bowl eligible teams for eight bowl bids. So somebody stays home. You got to look at the bottom of the standings with Kansas and Oklahoma State, both at six and six. But pretty good at the top with Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Texas. And that Texas team that was listed third there beat both of these teams yeah. during the regular season. Yeah, how about you know that? they're kicking themselves back in Austin watching this game tonight. 
Speaking of somebody that's watching uh, in Texas that I want to say hello to uh, Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Chiefs, who, uh, great guy. I mean, I enjoyed yeah. being a, an employee of the Chiefs when I played here, and uh, he's very instrumental in, in this game, being here in Kansas City, and uh, was in the hospital watching the game tonight, and just wanted to say hello to him, and uh, I know the Big 12 appreciates what he's done for this conference and for this championship game. And it's hard to find anybody associated with football that's uh, a nicer man than uh, Mr. Hunt, and we wish him all the best. Take a look at tonight's Pacific Life game summary. And it was Zach Taylor with three picks tonight after having only four all year long. And Paul Thompson, particularly on the run, was superb. So was Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Ten catches, 142 yards, and that sets all sorts of championship game records here. Well, who do you like for coach of the year, Barton? Well, I think there's been a lot of great coaching jobs this year, and, and uh, one guy who's not on this list who has done a great job is Jim Tressel at Ohio State, but I just uh, point out a couple other guys that I think have done an outstanding job, and Lloyd Carr at Michigan, 11-1, and one, after the team was uh, down last year, lost in their bowl game to uh, this Nebraska team, Revamped a lot of things. Pete Carroll, of course, I made this list before they lost to U UCLA <laughs> today. I thought they would win that game. Jim Grove at Wake Forest, phenomenal job. And as we said at the top, Bob Stoops and the job that he's done this year here at Oklahoma under the circumstances, outstanding. Well, I've got to look at that list, and I go back to Jim Grove and what he did at Wake Forest. Uh, that's pretty close to miracle yeah, status. Absolutely. Uh, because of Wake Forest's you know the history of their program and their lack of success and exactly what he did and then they win the ACC championship yeah. today it's just a miraculous job by him and he's got so many kids coming back next year they're going to be fun to watch yep Two eleven to go Oklahoma trying to wrap this one up New Year's Day of course the granddaddy of them all join ABC for all the pageantry and excitement that makes this game one of the great traditions in college football. Don't miss the 93rd edition of the Rose Bowl game presented by City. Coverage begins New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern on ABC. Now they'll kick it away with 2.11 on the clock. Cohen's job is just to get it out of there. There's nobody back to return it, so they'll be coming. And Cohen did just what he was supposed to be. Kick it. That's all you need to do. 29 yard kick balls out of bounds with 202 to go. Well, Purify's been a non factor since the beginning of the game, hasn't he? He really has, but he was part of that stat right there. Yeah, the five sure turnovers. Was. The very first play of the game, he fumbled after a short catch on the sideline, made another catch where they tried to rip the ball out, and he gained about 10 yards, and I don't think he's done anything since then. Very, very quiet. Our thanks to Bo Garrett and Scott Johnson down in the truck and this brilliant crew. We really appreciate everything they have done for us. Taylor. That one's underneath to Phillips, the tight end. And Latimer went down and he's hurt. And that will stop the clock at the 138 mark. Latimer and Alexander, along with Lofton, very, very good linebacking unit for this team. J.B. Phillips, he was the receiver and just landed right on top of Latimer at the end of that play.
Last time these teams played on a neutral field, the Orange Bowl, 1979, New Year's Day. Nebraska had edged Oklahoma earlier in the year, but this time, Billy Sims unstoppable. 134 yards, two touchdowns. Oklahoma won at 31 to 24. Billy Sims was unstoppable just about every time he took the field. About as talented a college football player as you could ever see. Well, I think you got it, young man. Your wish has come true. A Big 12 championship and the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on the horizon. And the Nebraska fans will be disappointed because about three quarters of this record crowd of over 80,000 had Nebraska ties. Well, Lincoln is just about a three hour drive up Route 29 from here. It's a much shorter drive than it is to get to Norman, Oklahoma. A lot of Nebraska fans very passionate both these states really and you both bet. these teams so passionate about their football the tradition the history Latimer fortunately fortunately looks like he's okay still a minute 38 to go blitz coming Taylor under pressure hit from behind. Is it a loose ball? Yeah. Oh, they're calling it an incomplete pass. That was close. Nick Harris was coming off the corner on a blitz. And the loose ball was picked up by Lofton. He was ready to set sail the other way. That's the second time somebody has gone by Taylor and then come back and gotten him from behind. Well, he steps up in the pocket, but he doesn't always get rid of it as soon as he steps right. up, and that allows guys to kind of circle the wagons and get yeah. to it. Here comes pressure again. And now we're down to fourth down with 121 to go. Darian Williams, the free safety, was coming in on Zach Taylor. Nebraska will fall to nine and four. They still have a pretty decent ball game in their future. And this is the first time they have been able to play in the Big 12 championship game since 99. And you gotta love your team to wear a big coin hat. <laughs> And it doesn't even have earmuffs on. Purify. Haven't heard much from him the entire game. He's down to the 30. No timeouts. The clock will stop temporarily while they move the chains, and that's it. Three catches for 37 yards for Maurice Purify, who caught the game winner against Texas A&M. Taylor goes down again and it's Nick Harris that nickelback this kid is quite a talent and he is a huge corner at 6 3 2 25. Well he's kind of a hybrid in this defense he's kind of a hybrid safety corner outside linebacker, linebacker. they do a lot of different things with that position because they're in the nickel defense quite a bit and so they they like to bring him on pressure. Taylor again trying to throw the sideline this time for Swift and it's short. Third and 16. Tonight's Chevrolet players of the game. Thompson, Paul, 265 yards passing, two TDs and an interception. And Malcolm Kelly, 142 yards receiving in those two scores in recognition of their efforts. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to it says each university's general scholarship fund that means 2000 would go to Oklahoma I believe since they are both from Oklahoma but we'll check on that one for you Taylor unloads for the end zone incomplete intended for France Hardy covered very well by Lindy Holmes you know just to go back I know that uh, 
Oklahoma's not on offense right now, but we, we talked about Thompson and Kelly and their offense. You gotta remember, too, this team coming into tonight averaging 183 yards a game, or 188 yards a game rushing, one of the best running teams right. in the country. And the last two games, they threw the ball 12 times against Baylor and 11 times against Oklahoma State. They come into tonight throwing the football. Paul Thompson, outstanding play. Malcolm Kelly, one catch for 12 yards last week in the Bedlam game against Oklahoma State. Taylor trying to throw his 50th pass of the game. Floats this one down to the one-yard line, nearly picked off. Tough night for Zach Taylor, but he has had a brilliant year for Nebraska. And now Oklahoma will take over, and they won't even have to snap the ball. And just think where the Oklahoma would be. You go back to that Oregon game and that, that horrible job that the officials did in that ball game. They win that game. They've only got one loss, and they are in the national championship mix. We would be talking tonight about... Why don't they deserve a Absolutely. shot to go against Ohio State? Absolutely. And Peterson, healing from that injury, he is supposed to be ready to play in what will now be the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, their bowl game with this win. Let's get down to Holly Rowe. Holly? Coach, first of all, your defense forces five turnovers tonight. What was special about them? Uh, we really covered well. Really, all night, the coverage was excellent. I wish we could have got a little more pressure, but our coverage was great. Kids made some great plays. The defining drive, you're on the half-yard line, but your quarterback, Paul Thompson, cool as ever. How did he do that drive? Well, we, uh, you know, a third down pickup was great to our true freshman, Jermaine Gresham, was big. And the rest of the drive, Paul was excellent. Uh, hats off to him. Boy, what a great character guy. And it's fun for him. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for him. With the adversity your team faced this season, what does a Big 12 championship mean? It's special. Uh, we feel fortunate, believe me, uh, to, you know, the, working with a great group of young guys that are just fabulous. They're just their attitude every day. And I got great assistant coaches who really deserve the credit. So um, it, it's been fun. It's been a fun group to coach. All right. Well, fun wow. ends in a championship this time. Mike? All right, Holly, thanks very much. And Todd, that 99-yard drive, that was the series of the game. The final score, Oklahoma beats Nebraska here in Kansas City, 21-7. Don't forget, Capital One Bowl Week begins later this month on ESPN and ABC. 14 games over seven days, culminating on New Year's Day with the Rose Bowl presented by City. For Holly Rowe and Todd Black Legend, our entire ESPN and ABC crew, thanks for watching ESPN on ABC. This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC.